one day in history, someone asked God, give me a home where the buffalo roam, and thus God made McAllister. It is a story of two four-loss teams on the season, both non-districts, uh, but it is Class A against Class 5A today, but a top-20 team in Class A has come to McAllister to take on the McAllister Buffaloes. Both these teams have a storied history of 15 consecutive state tournament appearances. Which team will emerge victorious today? We're about to find out. Hello and welcome to Mike Deakfield in McAllister, Oklahoma, the site of today's non-district game between the Red Oak Eagles and your McAllister Buffaloes. I'm your voice of the Buffaloes, Brandon Green, coming to you live on KNED, 1150 AM, 98.3 FM, the KNED app, as well as video streaming on the McAllister Radio YouTube channel. So the McAllister Buffaloes, 9-4 and four on the year, Red Oak Eagles, 11-4 and four on the year. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more about these two teams in a little bit, but the big story of today's game outside of the game itself is the the wind today. We have wind gusts that are going to be reaching up to as strong as 40 miles per hour this afternoon, and it's blowing out to left center center field. So if you get one up in the air, that thing is going to go flying today. So keep that in mind as we make our way throughout the next couple of hours, two or three hours here at Mike Deke Field. But other than that, it's going to be sunny in 75. If there's any clouds, it's high clouds up in the sky. It is a beautiful day for baseball. So the McAllister Buffaloes 9-4 and four on the year, uh, just coming off of a district sweep against the Tulsa Memorial Chargers. Again, a good get-back game, good get-back couple of games for them. They had 22 hits. Their pitching staff uh, of Caden Lustnow and Gannon Mullins combined for 21 strikeouts to seven free passes, and they only gave up one hit in two games. They're trying to build off of that, and not only are they trying to do that, None of the players playing for McAllister right now has beaten the Red Oak Eagles. Going back for at least the last few years, Red Oak has taken three in a row from the McAllister Buffaloes. Uh, for Red Oak, they are trying to get back to the state tournament. We mentioned just a minute ago 15 consecutive state uh, tournament appearances. For the first time in 15 years last year, they did not reach it. They were 15-9, and nine, and they were beat out in regionals by Caddo. Again, it was the first time missing their state tournament since 2006, if you don't include COVID, which everyone missed out on in 2020. So looking at the Red Oak Eagles so far in the year, some of their notable games they played, uh, they were against 2A number 8 Vianne, lost 6-2. Uh, six they lost 2-1 to one to 2A number 1 Oktaha and lost 7 to nothing to 2A number 3 Worcester. A couple of those teams McAllister will play this year. Again, Red Oak currently at Class A number 16, a dominant Red Oak Eagles team, 12 state titles, 7 in the spring, 5 in the fall, and a most recent state championship of 2022. Uh, again, we mentioned the 15 state tournaments in a row. They went to seven state title games in a row from 08 to 14, and they won four state championships in a row from 11 to 14. Could you imagine all four years of your varsity career, you win a state championship? That's pretty insane to think about. Looking at the Red Oak Eagles, we're about to have our starting lineups. The Red Oak Eagles led by head coach Lane Grogan in his second year at the helm back at his alma mater. One through nine looks like this for the Eagles. Leaving it off, the pitcher, number 25, Reed Cock, Cock on the mound. Batting second, the catcher, number six, Ty Grogan. Grogan behind the plate. Batting third, the shortstop, number one, Denver Durant. Durant at short. Batting cleanup, the third baseman, number 18, Rabbit Holly. Holly at the hot corner. Batting fifth, the center fielder, number 34, Cy Montgomery. Montgomery in center field. Batting sixth, the second baseman, number 10, Clint Harless. Harless at second. Batting seventh, the designated hitter, number 21, Brody Ashby. Ashby DHing for the right fielder, number 13, Logan Gandy today. Gandy in right field. Batting eighth, the first baseman, number 32, Grayson Colbert. Colbert at first. And rounding out the starting nine for the Red Oak Eagles, batting ninth, playing left field, number 20, Cade Branscombe. Branscombe in left field. Now for the McAllister Buffaloes, nine and four on the year, led by head coach Justin Mullins. Leading it off, the shortstop, number two, Caden Lesnow. Lesnow at short. Batting second, the third baseman, number 11, Gunnar Hodgel. Hodgel at third base. Batting third, the first baseman, number six, Gannon Mullins. Mullins at first. Batting cleanup, the catcher, number eight, Braden Phillips. Phillips behind the plate. Batting fifth, the right fielder, number 21, Aiden Shumway. Shumway in right. Batting sixth, the second baseman, number one, Spencer Stinchcomb. Stinchcomb at second. Batting seventh, the left fielder, number three, Jackson Lowerman. Lowerman in left. Batting eighth, the center fielder, number 10, Ethan Watkins. Watkins in center. And batting ninth, the designated hitter, number five, Jordan Clark. Clark, the DH for the pitcher today, number nine, Max Harmon. For the McAllister Buffaloes, they're going to be wearing their, looks like their black jerseys with their pinstripe pants. A lot of them were in stirrups as well with the black caps with the gold interlocking MB. 
That's also on the pocket of their jerseys with the gold numerals on the front and back. For the Red Oak Eagles, they're wearing their gray jerseys and gray pants. Or it's gray vests, really, with the black uh, undershirt. Looks like uh, their Red Oak blue uh, numerals on the front and back. So, uh, again, I'm Brandon Green along with Mr. Austin Sweetweed. He's going to be helping me out today. Uh, we are about to have the national anthem after we have our starting lineups be announced here at Mike Deke Field by PA. So we'll take a break, and we'll come back here in just a moment with the playing of our national anthem and first pitch here in just a moment on KNED. Hey guys, it's Sam from Sam Walther's Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula. With two locations to choose from, we have close to 200 vehicles on the ground and coming in. And with vehicles starting at $29.95, we have something for everyone. And if you need parts or service, we are loading up at both locations to serve you better. Plus, with our mobile service van and our pickup and delivery, we can help you with sales and service no matter where you are. So come see us at Sam Walther's Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula and let us make it happen for you. My wife makes the best Lasagna. Even in that old kitchen of ours. She deserves the best kitchen money can buy, but all our cash was tied up. So we went to the Bank N.A. for a loan for our kitchen remodel, and the folks at the Bank N.A. came through for us and our family. Plus, the Bank N.A. is local, so the money stays in town. Call 918-423-2265 or go into the Bank N.A. to get your loan for whatever your family wants or needs. The Bank N.A. Strong. Secure. And ready to loan. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Okay. Tire and Auto says come meet our new owner Dylan Hackler. We're a Michelin dealer and we're stocked up with Cooper, Toyo, Hankook and Max's Buckshot Mutters and Farm and ATV tires. Tire light on? We can fill your tires with nitrogen. We do brakes, alignments, struts and oil changes too. You'll appreciate our fast friendly service. All works guaranteed and estimates are free. Okay Tire and Auto, 801 North 1st McAllister. Call 918-423-2121 Good luck buffs. Have a great season. Fit and Madness is here. So brush up on your free throw and come shoot for TTNL. You get two shots, sink one, and we pay for half of your TTNL. Sink both, and Fit Nissan pays for all of your TTNL. Hurry up and shoot! Nothing but net. Don't forget to tell them Maddie sent ya. Fit and Nissan is your best deal dealer. Learn more at fitnissan.com. Number 10. Welcome back to Mike Deke Field here in McAllister, Oklahoma. Brandon Green along with Austin Weed bringing you McAllister baseball, this non-district matchup between the McAllister Buffaloes and the Red Oak Eagles. McAllister looking for their third consecutive win. Red Oak coming off of a win just a day ago. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and sit it down to the field for the playing of our national anthem after a moment of silence. For the playing of the anthem, we will recognize a moment of silence so that you may reflect, meditate, pray, or engage in other silent activity. We ask that you please be respectful to others around you during this moment of silence. Thank you. And now, to honor America and the brave women and men serving our country throughout the world, please join in the playing of our national anthem. It's baseball time here in McAllister, Oklahoma. So the Buffaloes are taking the field again, the home team for the third consecutive game for them. It'll be the third of an eventual six games that they'll be the home team for uh, for the McAllister Buffaloes. So 
Let's go ahead and look around the diamond once again for McAllister. It'll be Mullins at first base, Stinchcomb at second, Lesnow at short, Hodgel at third, in the outfield, Lowerman in left, Watkins in center, Shumway in right, and the battery for the buffs is Brayden Phillips behind the plate and Max Harmon on the mound. Harmon owning a 2-1 record on the year, 15 innings pitched, has a 6.07 ERA, 10 strikeouts to 10 walks, a 3.28 batting average against him. First pitch strike 55% of the time for the righty junior for the McAllister Buffaloes, Max Harmon. So the last time Harmon pitched it was against uh, Boulder Creek. That was Boulder Creek, Arizona. That was back on uh, last Tuesday. So it's been a little while since he's pitched. It's nine days. It'll probably be the longest amount of time that he'll go with uh, between pitching for the rest of the season as April's about to get really, really busy. We're about to have first pitch. First pitch brought to you by Big V Feed Center. See Big V Feed Center in McAllister, Hadco Farm and Ranch in Kiowa and Shakota Wholesale Feed Company in Shakota for your spring feeding program needs. So, uh, Austin, any final things, any final thoughts, anything you want to add before we start the broadcast? You know how I am. I'm always going to comment on the weather. It's a beautiful day for baseball. The sun has had a couple of clouds up in the sky, definitely not too hot at all. And the wind is actually going to be doing some of the players probably a little bit of good as it's blowing out. Unless you're the pitcher. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if there's a fly ball hit in your direction. I shouldn't have said players. I should say hitters. Any of the hitters are going to get a little extra bump because the wind is probably going to help them kind of nudge themselves out towards a little bit further than what they normally would go. I think everyone in the outfield is going to be playing about as far back as you can go. Yeah. Watch a lot of people uh, stand on the warning track today. So we're about to have first pitch as Max Harmon is getting ready to dig his way onto the mound, and Reed Kalk will be digging his way into the box. It would be pitcher against pitcher right here to start off this game. Playing in over at third base is Gunnar Hodgel. Hodgel, excuse me, um, Harmon is ready. Kalk is ready. And here's the first pitch of the evening. It's going to be a line drive right center field, and this one's going to one hop over to Aiden Shumway, and that's how this game begins. First pitch singled by Reed Kalk. Puts the Eagles on the base paths. They've won three games in a row. Most recently, like I said, a 6-4 win against Class A Cameron a day ago. Their last loss came to Worcester back on, I believe that was a Saturday, March 23rd. That was a 7-0 score against 2A number 3 Worcester. Pickoff over to first, not in time. Now up at the plate, they catch your number 6, Ty Grogan. So already an early base runner at first base. He won't take off with this pitch. It'll be a outside called strike fastball for Max Harmon to move the count to 0-1 on Ty Grogan. Grogan on the season batting 263, a 481 on base percentage though. Still playing kind of in is Hodgels. Here's a pitch that's going to miss up high, and the count moves to one ball and one strike on Grogan. Also playing uh, close to the third base line a little bit is Hodgel. So there's a little bit of a deeper gap along the left side of the infield. Runner at first, nobody out. Top of the first, no score, just getting started. Next pitch, swung on and missed for strike two on a nice curveball from Max Harmon, and the count moves to one and two. First pitch time today was 4-0-1. 4-0-1 first pitch time in McAllister. Count is one and two on Ty Grogan. As Harmon takes a look at first base, not a huge lead, though. And they'll pick off anyway just to kind of keep the runner honest. Usually that leadoff batter is one of the fastest players, if not the fastest player on your team. It's also the guy that gets on base the most, more than usually. One, two. Swing and a miss for strike three. Max Harmon gets the strikeout. And that's out number one here in the top of the first inning, bringing up Denver Durant. Durant batting 395 on the year, 547 on base percentage which is good for second on the team. 15 hits on the year, including a triple. Runner at first, one down, no score in the top of the first. First pitch to the lefty is going to miss low and inside to Durant for ball one. He has also 19 RBIs. That is good for second on the team behind Cy Montgomery, who's batting out the five spot today. Montgomery has 20 RBIs, including a home run. Pickoff over to first, back in safely is Kalk who's running for himself. 1-0 count here on Denver Durant, the three-hole batter. All the way back in the box, looks like a slightly open stance. Here's the 1-0 pitch that's going to miss upstairs. And the count rolls to 2-0. Play for Reno, number one, Denver Durant. 
In, if there's one person the wind's not benefiting today at the plate, it's the left-handed batter. But, again, if you go opposite field, it will carry. As this curveball misses outside, and the count quickly goes to 3-0 and on Durant. As the throwback over to Harmon goes past him, but they're backing him up is Caden Less now. So a 3-0 count here to three-hole batter Denver Durant. Harmon trying to get back into it. He's, he peeks back over at first base. He's already picked off over there a few times. Does not do it this time. And the fastball goes right down Broadway for strike one. Still a hitter's count for Durant at three balls, one strike. Again, it's uh, Red Oak owning a three-game win streak over the McAllister Buffaloes dating just back to 2021. This count is three and one. And a pickoff back over to first back in time is once again Calc. But the two times that, or out of the three times McAllister has played Red Oak the last two seasons, they didn't get to play him last year, but they played him in 2021 and 2022, three games between those two years. Red Oak was state runner ups in 21, as this one misses Lone inside for ball four. And in 2022, Red Oak, they were state champions. So that puts runners at first and second on the five pitch walk. To bring up Rabbit Holly, the cleanup hitter. Third baseman number 18. Runners at first and second for Red Oak. No score, top of the first with one down. Buffaloes can try to roll a double play here. They rolled four in the matter of three games between Hugo a couple of Fridays ago, two weeks ago, actually to the day. And then their next two games, Tolleson and Boulder Creek in Arizona. First pitch showing bunt, uh, pulling back though as it misses up high for ball one. Again, Side Montgomery is on deck one of the four Red Oak Eagle batters that have home runs on the year. No one has more than one. Rabbit Holly at the plate as he gets a, well, he tries to get a button down. He does make contact, but it flies behind the catcher, Braden Phillips, and the count rolls to one and one. Holly on the year at 341 batting average, 463 on base percentage. He is one of the batters with a home run on the season. He also has seven doubles. So he has more extra base hits than he has singles. Eight extra base hits, seven singles. And 18 RBIs, which is good for third on the team. Playing in is the first baseman, Mullins. The 1-1 still showing bunt. Does not get it down as it hits him while he's still in the right-handed batter's box as he made contact, and the count moves to one and two. But out of the cleanup spot, that shouldn't make the McAllister Buffaloes think that this guy can't swing the bat well because... As we just mentioned, he can. But the question is, does he still try to get a bunt down and take the risk with two strikes? Some coaches like to do that. Some coaches don't. Obviously, there's a big risk if you still try doing it. The one-two does not, obviously, and it moves down low for a ball two. Two balls, two strikes. And speaking of coaches, Lane Grogan in for a second year with his alma mater, the Red Oak Eagles, after he graduated from Red Oak, in which he won three rings with the Red Oak Eagles. 13, 14, and 16 as the years he won a state championship with the uh, Eagles. He was an all-state player for them as well in 2016. He went to go play for Carl, Carl Albert State College and then went on to Arkansas Fort Smith where he played collegiate baseball. So back with his alma mater. 2-2. Two -two. Curveball pops it up. Foul territory. Lowerman trying to chase it down, but this one's going to get out of his reach, and it bounces into the bullpen. And we'll do it again at two and two. Harmon now had him, he had him out in front with the off speed, but still a good discipline play by Rabbit Holly to be able to keep his hands back just enough to be able to make contact with that and fight for another pitch. Count is two and two. Harmon comes set, takes a long look at second, now delivers. This one's going to bounce off the plate in an unfortunate stroke of luck there for the Eagles. Is that? Moves runners up to second and third. It hit off the very front of the plate, and it popped way high, and it landed on top of the awning in which it rolled back on to the field. So now, without having to bunt, the bunt does its job, and you still have your cleanup hitter up with runners at second and third and one down. Three, two pitch coming up. Harmon working out of the windup. The pitch. Line drive, shortstop position, diving is less now, but can't come up with it. One run's going to score at least. Watkins fires to his cutoff man, Gannon Mullins, and the Eagles take an early 1-0 lead on the RBI single from Rabbit Holly right up the chute. So 
the Eagles score here in the top of the first. It is a one nothing ball game. Brunners at the corners for Cy Montgomery. The center fielder tied for the team leading batting average with 429. Also a 510 on base percentage. 20 RBIs leads the team. All the way back in the box. And one down with one uh, run already scored here in the first. Not much of a lead over at first. As Harmon steps off and steps right back on. Now this is one thing I didn't know about the Buffaloes. <laughs> Uh, and I think this is a team-wide thing here, as here's a 31 move. But over in Arizona, it was the third day, so it was Wednesday when they were traveling over to Sunrise Mountain. When they were traveling to Sunrise Mountain, as we're switching out a ball here. So when they traveled there, uh, Max Harmon was warming up with a cowboy hat. And on the front of the cowboy hat, it had the McAllister Buffalo logo on the front, and it said Gunslinger on the back. I thought it was just a hat that he had. And he said, no, it's Gunslinger Pitcher of the Week. So I guess what happens here, as we're about to see our first pitch to Cy Montgomery, first pitch to the right, he's going to bounce, and he gets away from Phillips. One run's going to score. Eagles take a 2 nothing lead as the runner at first advances to second. And the Eagles getting an early start on the Buffaloes, still with only one down in the top of the first. But... It said Gunslinger, and he says, no, it's Gunslinger, Pitcher of the Week. And so that made sense because the week before that, it was Harmon that came in in a clutch situation against Tulsa Edison to bail out McAllister on the mound that eventually led to them winning the game 13-12. So I guess that whoever wins Gunslinger, Pitcher of the Week, gets to keep the they, hat. They get to keep it until the, either the next the, time someone takes it or for the week. Right, for the next week. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's incentive. You right. know, hey, if you do this, you get to, you know, wear a hat. The 1-0. He'll be fouled straight back, and that'll move the count to one ball and one strike on Montgomery. You'd be surprised how far, like, a small incentive like that, you mm -hmm. know, just something goofy, something silly, can really help motivate if teams I, in general, whether it's for baseball or any kind of sport. I'm not a betting man, but if I was one, I'll continue this slot after the 1-1. One, one. This one's going to be a line drive left center field. This one's going to land, too, and it's going to be a hopper all the way towards the wall, and he gets there quickly with the wind pushing at its back. Going to be an RBI double here for Cy Montgomery, and it's a 3 nothing Red Oak Eagle lead. As the winners of three, three in a row are feeling hot here in the top of the first. To the plate, for the Eagles. Brings up Clint Harless, the six-hole batter, second baseman, number 10. But if I was willing to bet who won Gunslinger Pitcher of the Week last week, that would have been Caden Lust now. Went six and two-thirds. Uh, no, all, right, all shutout innings against Tolleson, a really solid team, 6A team out of Arizona. As here's a bunt down the third base line. It's a beauty. Running in on his hodgel, has to make a tough play. Throws across his body, and the catch is made by the first baseman. That's Gannon Mullins. It's going to go down as a sack bunt there for Clint Harless, but obviously was wanting a base hit out of it. Still moves the runner from second over to third. But a great play by Gunnar Hodgel to be able to get the second out of the inning to bring up Brody Ashby. The designated hitter, number 21. CBG, they're lucky I wasn't out there because I would have been, you know, gunslinger hitter uh, or uh, pitcher of the year. <laughs> Here's the windup in the pitch from Harmon. This will be a fastball called strike one. I was a rookie of the year at the Kenna Buffalo. Or not Kenna, Kenna Buffalo. but Kenna Bowling League. Kenna Bowling League, yeah. <laughs> I need to join that one day. Ashby batting 250 with a 424 on base percentage on the season. The 0-1 is going to be swung on and missed for strike two as Ashby was behind on the fastball. Ashby does have a home run, and he also has six RBIs on the season. Trying to bring in a run from third. The 0-2 pitch. Harmon says not yet. Gets him with a high cheddar to be able to end the top of the first inning. So two strikeouts for Max Harmon, but he do give up three runs in the top of the first as the Eagles with an early lead. We head to the home half of the first. Can the Buffaloes answer back? We're about to find out here on KNED. Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub serves great breakfasts all day and juicy burgers too. Angel's Diner also serves brick oven pizza on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 p.m. to close. Angel's Steaks are certified Angus beef and the pub offers beer, wine, and mixed drinks. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner make it Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub. 1402 South George 9 Expressway, McAllister. Call 918-423-2633. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like us on 
on Facebook. Hi, my name is Gail, and I invite you to TNW Tire, an Oklahoma-based company formed in 1987. In 2020, TNW Tire acquired the McAllister location, where Doug and I have worked for over 20 years, providing service to McAllister and the surrounding areas. Our trained technicians continue to provide quality service for brakes, suspension, and alignments, along with 24-hour road service. We carry Goodyear, Michelin, and many other brands to fit your budget. Stop by TNW Tire, Highway 69 and Peaceable Road, McAllister. Call 918-426-6571. Go Buffs! Beat the heat with American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and Freeze and Flare. Your local champs for cool perfection. Proud McAllister Buffalo supporters. Score with financing offers upon approved credit. See dealer for details. Call 918-217-8785 or visit freezeandflare.com to hit it out of the park. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Freeze and Flare, your home comfort, home run. License number 001 44485. Welcome back to Mike Deke Field here in McAllister, Oklahoma. The Buffaloes are down to the Red Oak Eagles after they put up a three spot in the top of the first, trying to answer back. It'll be Caden Lesnow, Gunnar Hodgel, and Gannon Mullins, one, two, three for McAllister. We'll look around the diamond for the Eagles here in just a second as Reed Kalk, the right handed pitcher, steps on the rubber. Going to be working out the stretch with nobody on. As the home plate umpire tries to tell someone from McAllister's dugout that got to get inside the dugout. As he, here's the first pitch to Caden Less now in the Buffalo offense. It's going to be a ground ball towards the shortstop. Durant feeling it cleanly, throws over to first. Racing down the first baseline is Less now, but can't get there in time. And it's a 6 3 ground out and already one down in the bottom of the first. Around the diamond, it's Colbert at first, Harless at second, Durant at short, Hawley at third. Branscombe in left, Montgomery in center, Gandy in right, and the battery for the Eagles today. You have Grogan behind the plate and Reed Kalk on the mound for the Red Oak Eagles. He's pitching now eight and a third, has not given up a run. No earned runs for Kalk in his eight and a third as the first pitch is low and outside for ball one as it skips to the backstop against Gunnar Hodgel. He has struck out 13, only walked three, and the batting average against him is just 120. Let me ask you a question. Uh, as the 1-0 uh, oh pitch misses outside to move the count to 2-0 and oh on Hodgel. Everybody knows, you know, Mike Deke field, turf field, mm -hmm. right? So I didn't know for a long time until we saw him at the other day, but 2-0 oh misses outside to move to 3-0. Oh. The pitcher's mound is also made of turf. Yep, every single part of Mike Deke field is turf. Now, do you think that may play a part in, you know, some of these other teams? Sometimes it does. I actually do think it does as the 3-0 catches the bottom part of the zone to make it 3-1. Because turf, well, at least when it comes to infield and outfield, the ball well, it skips. Yeah, yeah. It, it moves faster as the 3-1 misses upstairs, and that will be a five-pitch walk to Gunnar Hodgel. So, like, infielders, they're never going to get a bad hop, but that ball is going to be flying at you a lot faster than it would be if it was on grass just because of the way that turf is. But it could also be weird for a pitcher pitching on a turf mound for the first time in a while just because – they're used to maybe landing on dirt. It's yeah. it could be a psychological thing there too, and just maybe something that you're not used to when you're, you know. It just doesn't feel the same. Yeah, it doesn't feel the same. So it can yeah. it can play a part, but same thing as as sometimes players of basketball will find what they call like a, a dead spot, and on a court. You mean like a hot spot, or like a place where they don't where it doesn't where the ball doesn't bounce as good or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pop-up, but again, the wind's going to take this one a little bit further, too. Center fielder Montgomery comes after it. Now it goes past him, but he still makes the running catch and makes it up against the warning track, and now be out number two as Gannon Mullen sent that one out to center field. That looked like it was going to be a routine center field uh, catch, and then once it gets a little bit further down to the stratosphere, that's when the wind starts to take it a little bit more. I think that today's one of those rare days where you'd rather get the ball up in the air than hit it on the ground. So Braden Phillips... He'll dig into the right-handed batter's box with a runner at first. McAllister down 3-0, bottom of the first inning, with two down for McAllister. As Kalk hasn't really thrown a lot of pitches this inning yet, as he picks off over to first and again sliding back in safely is Gunnar Hodgel. Phillips comes in today batting 256 for the Buffaloes, a 362 on on-base percentage. Yeah, they'll find those dead spots in basketball courts from time to time, and you actually just, hear about players talking or, like, working around it, and then when they go to a different place, they still try and work around it, but it doesn't work. It's not there anymore. <laughs> just feels like they can't hit from that spot. 
I imagine you have hot spots where you know you feel more comfortable shooting in certain situations. I guess for three point shooters. Yeah, I imagine there's like hot spots, dead spots on the mound too for a pitcher. As the first pitch misses upstairs to Phillips. Phillips still like he was last year, the player that knows how to go deep into counts. Six times, this, or actually four times this year, he's had seven pitches or more in that bat as this one misses upstairs, and the count moves to 2-0. and oh. And again, Phillips, I'm sure he's a Yankees fan. I know that his family's a Yankees fan. A little bit of a Soto shuffle there when he sees a ball go up high, kind of slides up into the batter's box. Speaking of Yankees, we had opening day yesterday. So here comes the 2-0 to Phillips. He'll swing at this one. It'll be a blooper over towards left center field. It could land. Going to be a tough catch. He caught it. What an amazing catch by the shortstop, Durant, as he made one of the most phenomenal catches that you could see from a shortstop in that kind of area. He was fighting the wind, and he's also still going back towards the left center field area. Had to see if he wanted to do the basket catch, but he reached up and was able to kind of snow cone that ball as he fell down to the turf and took a hit away from Braden Phillips. And that's how the first inning ends. It's 3-0 Red Oak leads McAllister as we head to the top of the second inning. You're listening to McAllister Baseball here on... Here at Reagan Auto, we offer a variety of services for your vehicle needs. AC and heat repair, brakes, tires, front end repair, alignments, electrical repair, and everything in between. We are proud to offer a select line of engines and transmissions backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide warranty. Give us a call at 918-715-3236 or stop by and speak to one of our advisors about how we can help. 306 East Wyandotte in McAllister from the team at Reagan Auto. Thanks for your business. Hey guys, it's Sam from Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula. With two locations to choose from, we have close to 200 vehicles on the ground and coming in. And with vehicles starting at $29.95, we have something for everyone. And if you need parts or service, we are loading up at both locations to serve you better. Plus, with our mobile service van and our pickup and delivery, we can help you with sales and service no matter where you are. So come see us at Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula and let us make it happen for you. Welcome back to McAllister, Oklahoma, here at Mike Deke Field. After one full inning of play, the McAllister Buffaloes trail the Red Oak Eagles 3-0 uh, to zero as we head now to the top of the second inning. <coughs> It'll be the 8-9-1 batters up, Grayson Colbert, Cade Branscombe, and Reed Kalk for the Red Oak Eagles. Eagles looking for their fourth one in a row. Again, McAllister looking for their third, but they already got to dig out of a 3-0 deficit if they're going to do so. I was mentioning before the Brayton Phillips pop-up to end the first inning that, again, uh, opening day was yesterday. We hope that your favorite team won, unless they're playing my favorite team. But the uh, New York Yankees defeated the, uh, what was it, the New York Yankees defeated the Houston Astros 5-4 behind a big day from Juan Soto. The Texas Rangers with a big-time win last night against the Chicago Cubs as Harmon, Toes the rubber, begins the second inning with the pitch to Colbert that's going to be swung on and missed for strike one on a good off-speed pitch that fooled Colbert, swung on and missed for the first strike of inning number two. What but about the yet, Red Sox? Red Sox won last night, too. They defeated the Seattle Mariners 6-4 in a very late-night game. That's my favorite team. The wind-up in the 0-1 pitch. It's going to miss inside with a fastball to move the count now to one ball and one strike. Yeah, but uh, that was primetime ESPN baseball last night for the Texas Rangers, defeated... Uh, the Cubs in extra innings on a Jonah Heim line drive as the 1-1. Misses it downstairs, and the count goes to 2-1. It's an emphasis for today, and Harmon knows it, to keep the ball down low. If he can keep the ball down low, then it's going to hopefully lead to a lot of ground balls and to keep the ball out of the air, which we saw what happens when you get the ball in the air today. Is this one's going to go in the air as well? Wynn might take it back, so stay with it as it goes now out of... Looks like it landed on top of the press box all the way towards the left side of it. But that looked like it was for sure going towards the parking lot, and the wind brought it all the way back on top of the uh, top of the press box. So don't give up on any fly balls that look like they're for sure heading towards the sea of concrete behind us. Count is 2-2 two and two on Grayson Colbert. Just now beginning the top of the second. Harmon fires and just misses a little bit low. Good eye there by Grayson Colbert, the first baseman. I think Harmon wanted that one. The count now moves to full at three balls and two strikes. Harmon, the payoff, 
It's going to miss up and outside with a fastball, and that will be ball four, second walk of the day for Harmon. He's got two walks to two, to two strikeouts. He's got 12 strikeouts to 12 walks on the season. That brings up Cade Branscombe. Branscombe batting 200 with a 467 on base percentage. He has seven RBI on the year. He has walked seven times. And he's also been hit by a pitch, get this, eight times. That's 15 free passes to Branscombe. We'd always talk about how Ethan Watkins, how he's got 16. <laughs> Branscombe is right there with Watkins. First pitch shows bunt, tries to get it down and fouls it off. It was a late bunt attempt. And the count moves to 0-1 on the nine-hole batter, Branscombe. Red Oak has already tried to lay a bunt down three different times today. This makes for the third attempt. Well, third batter with an attempt. Shows bunt again. Does get down the first base line. It's going to be a tough play. Mullins will grab it. Now step on first as he was racing down the first base line. The reason why I said it could be a tough play at first was because if it got kind of a cross up there between Harmon and Mullins, if there's miscommunication, that could have led to an infield single. But Mullins calls everyone off, gets the ground ball, steps on first, three unassisted. And it brings up the top of the order for Reed Kalk, who, with the first pitch of the game, drove it into right center field to get on the base path. So runner at second with one down, top of the second inning. Eagles lead the Buffaloes 3-0. Harmon delivers and forces Kalk to swing and miss on a high fastball. Count goes to 0-1. I know that your eyes kind of get big when you look at the letter high fastball. It's going to get even, your eyes are going to, I mean, get as wide as a cartoon character today when you see that high fastball. Again, anything in the air might be driven out to the warning track. The 0-1 will miss inside for ball one. This might be one of the windiest days that I've seen in the, in the last two or three years of covering McAllister baseball. Get up to 40 mile per hour wind gusts today. Count is one and one. Pitch from Harmon. Misses up and inside. The count's now two and one. Yeah, if you look, if you were able to look at the netting just to the left of the press box, there's so many leaves that have been caught by that netting because of how strong the wind's blowing. Count two and one to Calc, the runner in scoring. The pitch from Harmon. This one's going to miss it down on the turf, and the count moves to three and one. So for someone who doesn't like to, you know, rake leaves, someone's getting an easy job today as it's all pushing it to one area. Three balls, one str Well, it should be three and one, I believe. That's what we have here. Scoreboard still shows two one. And the pitch from Harmon. This is going to miss upstairs too, and that'll be ball four. That's not a terrible decision there. Puts runners at first and second. Now there's a chance at a double play ball. You had that first base open. Brings up Ty Grogan. And here's another situation. Do you do you try bunting with him here? Because you did attempt to bunt with two outs or with one down before with Clint Harless. Did they try doing it again here with Ty Grogan? And it shows bunt, gets it down, straight over to Harmon. Harmon throws over to the leadoff guy, and that'll be uh, Gunnar Hodgel at third base to get the out. That's a smart play by Max Harmon, taking the look over at third to see if he had enough time to be able to get the force out. And he was able to get the lead runner, is what I was trying to say. Not the leadoff guy, the lead runner. And that does not move runners over. So a good play by Max Harmon on the fielder's choice. I'll go down as a 1-5 fielder's choice on the bunt to bring up Denver Durant, who walked his first time up. The lefty for the Eagles. So two down, runners at first and second. 3-0 Red Oak lead over McAllister, top of the second. First pitch is going to miss upstairs to Durant for ball one. Again, three walks. So far today for Harmon. Count is 1-0. And the pitch. This one's going to miss upstairs for ball two. On the season, McAllister's pitching staff, a 4.34 ERA. They now have 97 strikeouts to, that is 82 free passes. Batting average against the pitching staff of McAllister, though, really good, 203. And their first pitch strike percentage is around 52% on the season. Facing a really good lineup, though, today. 2-0. We'll catch the outside corner with the strike call from the home plate umpire. Count moves to 2-1. and 
The Eagles, as a team, coming into today, batting 325 with a 477 on base percentage. Again, the Eagles with an 11 and 4 record. And time will be called by Durant. Let us know where you're listening from today or watching from today on Twitter at Buff Sports Radio. Again, that is Twitter at Buff Sports Radio, or you can let us know on Facebook at facebook.com slash McAllister Radio in the comments underneath our last post. 2 1. Swing and a miss on a huge cut from Denver Durant, and the count now at 2 and 2. Deuce is wild with two runners on here in the second. Harmon trying to leave those runners stranded. He comes set, takes a look, and delivers. It'll be a line drive opposite field that's going to hit off of the Hughes Fieldhouse sign. And Logan sees racing after that ball down the <laughs> foul area. Count still two and two. Coach Meadows calling out the signs. Braden Phillips receiving, relaying to Max Harmon. Harmon. Gives the nod, comes to a pause, looks at second base. Back to Phillips. One more glance, and now the 2-2. Pops it up, and this one's going to get out of play as well, and land on top of the Hughes Fieldhouse, where you hope a ball comes down from there where it normally does not. <coughs> Already right now I can see about four or five baseballs that roll towards the gutter of the Hughes Fieldhouse. Here's the 2-2. And again, we're going to have to do it again, as this one's fouled straight back into the netting. Big battle brewing here between the shortstop number one, Denver Durant, and the pitcher number nine, Max Harmon. Who will win the battle? A runner in scoring position, and then another one right behind him, 90 feet. A 2-2 count and an eagle 3-0 lead over the Buffs. And a good crowd today, too, on a Friday afternoon. 2-2 pitch. This is upstairs, and the count now three balls, two strikes. Lurking on deck is Rabbit Holly, who had an RBI single back in the first. That pavilion over by the McAllister dugout is all, I mean, all full. Standing room only over there. Spin move, they haven't caught up, but there's no one over at the second base bag. That's a good idea to do it right there with the 3-2 count. Runner's going to be taken off with the pitch, so it's a good idea for the spin move, but less now nor Stinchcomb were close to the bag to be able to get the runner and Get him in no man's land. 3-2. Runners take off. The pitch is going to be a chopper. Right side. Cut off by the first baseman Mullins. Flips over to Harmon. Harmon dropped the ball. One, run's gonna uh, run, one run is going to score, and the runner advances from first over to third. And this is going to go down as an E1. It was a big chopper. Easy bounce. Went straight into the glove of Mullins. Mullins threw it over to Harmon. But on the throw, in and out of the glove of Harmon. And the Eagles make it 4-0. And it brings up Rabbit Holly with runners at the corners, and this inning will continue. 4 0 the score. Me to the order up for the Eagles with two down in the top of the second. Before the doubleheader against Tulsa Memorial, McAllister had a rough stretch of three games with errors. So there's a little 31 move from Harmon trying to see if someone goes off the bag. They had 10 errors in their first, I believe it was eight games. I want to say it was eight games of the season. And then in the stretch of three games, here's the first pitch to Hawley that misses upstairs for ball one. Yeah, they had, eight, uh, I think, again, 10 errors in the first eight games. And then in a stretch of three games, the last three at Tolleson, or excuse me, at Arizona, they had 12 errors in three games, so they don't want to see that come back to bite them. So here's the 2-0 pitch. He'll leave this one for the Birds, and they'll smooth the count at 3-0. You don't want to see that come back, though. Again, McAllister only had one error against Tulsa Memorial. Granted, McAllister did strike out 21 batters, so there wasn't a lot of balls put in play. Eagles, though, doing plenty of putting the ball in play today. 3-0. That's actually 2-0. The scoreboard had it wrong there. That'll move the count to three balls, no strikes. When you said that, right. when you said that I was confused. I was like, I only have one on here. <laughs> Did I miss a whole pitch? I, I'm looking at the scoreboard at the field, not your scoreboard, Austin. My bad. 3-0 pitch. This one is ball four, and it's a four-pitch walk to Rabbit Holly. 
And we've already mentioned how free passes have been killing McAllister in their losses. And their two wins in Arizona. I think they walked a combined five batters or just gave up five free passes in general. And then in the last two games, it was 20 of them. So when McAllister is losing their game so far this season, it's been, you know, the walk issue. When they're winning their games, it's really good pitching, really good defense. Coach Meadows is going to go speak with Max Harmon. We'll take a 30-second break and be back here on KNED. My wife makes the best lasagna, even in that old kitchen of ours. She deserves the best kitchen money can buy, but all our cash was tied up. So we went to the Bank N.A. for a loan for our kitchen remodel, and the folks at the Bank N.A. came through for us and our family. Plus, the Bank N.A. is local, so the money stays in town. Call 918-423-2265 or go into the Bank N.A. to get your loan for whatever your family wants or needs. The Bank N.A. Strong, secure, and ready to loan. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Welcome back to McAllister, Oklahoma. It's now bases loaded for the Red Oak Eagles. An error put a run on the board for the Eagles and prevented McAllister from ending the inning unscathed. But now after the error, there was a walk to load the bases. The Red Oak Eagles lead McAllister 4-0, and it's a pivotal moment in the game. The Eagles can maybe put McAllister in the rear view if they can get a big hit here, and it's against Cy Montgomery, the team leader in RBIs who already has an RBI double today. So this is the most important at-bat already here in the top of the second inning with two down for Max Harmon in the Buffalo defense. First pitch to Montgomery. He goes swinging, but hits off the top of the bat. It's a slow roller towards Les now. Les now fields it quickly. Does not have a play. Runner is now coming home. He throws home, and that'll be an out. Out of the play, one run is going to score, but a smart play by Caden Les now. To, he didn't have a good transfer from glove to hand, so instead of trying to make it happen and maybe possibly have a bad throw to lead way more runs, the senior... With the baseball IQ to hold on to it, see where the runner's at going from third to home. He was already halfway down the line. He throws home to be able to get the out. That's going to end up being an RBI infield single for Isai Montgomery. But they limit it to two runs, and the Eagles with an early 5 nothing lead. It could have been a lot worse, though, if uh, Les now did not uh, do the smart thing with that ball. So 5 nothing, Eagles lead the buffs. We'll go to the bottom of the second here on KNED. <laughs> Okay. Tire and Auto says come meet our new owner Dylan Hackler. We're a Michelin dealer and we're stocked up with Cooper, Toyo, Hankook and Max's Buckshot Mutters and Farm and ATV Tires. Tire light on? We can fill your tires with nitrogen. We do brakes, alignments, struts and oil changes too. You'll appreciate our fast friendly service. All works guaranteed and estimates are free. Okay Tire and Auto, 801 North 1st McAllister. Call 918-423-2121. Good luck Buffs. Have a great season. Fit and Madness is here. So brush up on your free throws and come shoot for TTNL. You get two shots. Sink one and we pay for half of your TTNL. Sink both and Fit Nissan pays for all of your TTNL. Hurry up and shoot! Nothing but net. Don't forget to tell them Maddie sent ya. Fit and Nissan is your best deal dealer. Learn more at fitnissan.com. Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub serves great breakfasts all day and juicy burgers too. Angel's Diner also serves brick oven pizza on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 p.m. to close. Angel's Steaks are certified Angus beef and the pub offers beer, wine, and mixed drinks. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner make it Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub. 1402 South George Knight Expressway, McAllister. Call 918-423-2633. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like us on on Facebook. Buffalo's with a 5 nothing deficit, and they need to answer back here in this inning. I know it could be a long game for McAllister, but they need some momentum here in the bottom of the second, and look no further than Aiden Shumway, who's been on the tear for the Buffaloes. The first pitch that Shumway sees will cross the eyes for ball one. McAllister is down 5-0, heading to the bottom of the second inning, now fully into the bottom of the second. As the leadoff batter, Shumway, five, six, seven hole batters up from the Calister Buffaloes are here. This is a ground ball left side. It's going to get deep into the hole, and there's no play at first. And that's another base hit for Aiden Shumway. Make that double digits when it comes to games with a base hit in a row. A 10 game hit streak for Aiden Shumway. Didn't give me enough time to even tell him what he's been doing in this uh, hit streak. Not including today, 577 over the last nine games. And he's had two games. All season, where he said no hits at all. So he has been by far McAllister's best hitter. 
inching closer to that 500 batting average. Spencer Stinchcomb digs into the box. Runner at first, nobody out. McAllister down 5-0. Here's the next pitch from Kalk. It's going to miss upstairs with ball one to Stinchcomb. We'll talk a little bit more about Shumway when we uh, see him again his second time up. But Stinchcomb, though, had a really good series against Tulsa Memorial. Went three for five with three RBIs. As this one's going to be a one, uh, one hopper over to the shortstop. Who dove for the ball. I think he just slid. I think that he was going up the middle of the field, and the ball bounced. I think it had some English on it is what happened. It was off the top of the bat. It landed, and then it spun back towards where the shortstop position was at. So having to dive back for the ball is Durant, and it was off the top of his glove. That's going to be an interesting uh, decision there for the scores keeper as it brings up Jackson Lauberman with runners at first and second and nobody out. We're going to see what they officially ruled that last one by Sinchcomb as the first pitch misses down low for ball one. It's going to go down as an error, but that's one of those things where it could be either way. Uh, again, I thought at first Durant slipped, but then re-looking at it, that ball might have had some English hitting off the turf where it was hit off the very top of the bat and where it one-hopped. It looked like it was going to be an easy one-hop and out at second base or an out at first at least. But I think when it bounced, it spun like a top back over to the, where the shortstop position was. Just a little bit to be able to have Durant jump after the ball. So runners at first and second with nobody out. It's going to be pre-bunt defense, and it almost gets Shumway, but he dives back. A good throw may have made that close. And that's a play that we actually, uh, I used to be a part of playing for McAllister Baseball. It's where you know for sure that the guy's going to bunt, or it doesn't matter anyway. Everybody goes to a certain area, but the second baseman goes to a bag to try to be able to get a guy off base. Lauerman shows bump, pulls back as the pitch is up high again to move the count to 2-0. Also, you could break early to try to take away the bunt all the way if you know for sure that the guy up at the plate will bunt. Right there, they're just trying to get Shumway with a pickoff. 2-0. Does not show bunt. Just gets the knees. And now move the count to 2-1. and one. Lowerman with a 317 on base percentage. He's batting 250 with runners in scoring. 75% of his hits with runners in scoring this year. And 4 RBI. Next pitch will be lined straight into the Red Oak dugout. Counts now two and two. Ethan Watkins on deck. 5-0 Eagle lead over McAllister. Prime opportunity here for the Buffaloes. Calc delivers, and it's going to be a swing and a miss for strike three on the curveball. Lowerman chases, and that's the first strikeout of the day for Reed Kalk in his 14th on the year. Brings up the center fielder, number 10, Ethan Watkins. You know, one has scored on the Eagles so far this year. Buffalo's trying to, or on the Eagles, on Reed Kalk of the Eagles so far this year. Buffalo's trying to be the first team to do so. Watkins, his last at bat that he ever had against the Red Oak Eagles, came in his sophomore season, and it was a two run home run beyond the left field wall. Can history repeat itself with a Near 40 mile per hour wind gust blowing that way. He had three home runs for the Buffaloes a season ago. Doesn't have one yet, but he's got some extra base hits. Spin move, and Shumway reads it well. And go back towards the bag. Runners at first and second with one down for McAllister. A big hit by the Buffaloes can kind of change this game around a little bit. Buffaloes have had one hit, and again, it's been Aiden Shumway to lead off this inning. Infield single. As he does pop this one up, this one's sky high. Shallow outfield, second baseman fighting for it. It's going to bounce and take a high bounce. What are we doing? We're running back over to the bag. As there's going to be a force out over at third base. Again, kind of no man land here. And that'll be out number two. It's actually an infield fly. So infield fly actually right there as it was in the infield at first and kept on pushing towards middle of center field. They never had to throw it over to third. So it's an infield fly rule in effect on that play because the second baseman could possibly catch that or is the one that was closest to that ball. So infield fly on Ethan Watkins there. That is why he's out. And it brings up Jordan Clark. You might be wondering, well, that was already in the outfield. That's not technically the rule. It's the, if you think an infielder can get to that ball to make the catch, 
That's typically where an infield fly rule is into effect. It protects the runners in that situation. Right there, it hurts McAllister. Runners at first and second with two down. The count is 0-1. Shumway trying to get a good jump, but has to come back over to the second base bag when the timing wasn't right. Thought about it. Yeah, he's trying to time up the pitcher. What he's doing is he's going U-C-L-A in his head, trying to time up and see if the pitcher gets into a rhythm. And if he does so with a couple of pitches in a row, then he knows he can take off if he's got the green light. As this one's going to be fouled off by Clark, and he quickly goes down in the count 0-2. So McAllister has runners at first and second. They had that with nobody out, but then it was strikeout, infield, fly, and they have a chance to have no runs here. The Eagles trying to get out of their first jam today. <clears throat> Clark out of the nine hole. Looking to drive in at least Shumway. Shumway takes off. The 0-2 is going to miss low. The, pitch, or the throw over to third is not in time. Shumway with a stolen base. Nearly came off the bag as Hawley tried keeping the tag on him. Stinchcomb does follow from first over to second. Now there's runners at second and third for Clark. For Shumway, that is stolen base number 11. Now tied for the team lead in stolen bases with Caden Lust now. Stinchcomb just got his fifth. The one, two. Outside corner, strike three, got him looking. And the Buffaloes leave runner stranded at second and third, and the Eagles maintain that five-run lead over the Buffaloes. We head to the top of the third inning. McAllister trailing Red Oak 5-0 here on Kate. Hi, my name is Gail, and I invite you to TNW Tire, an Oklahoma-based company formed in 1987. In 2020, TNW Tire acquired the McAllister location, where Doug and I have worked for over 20 years, providing service to McAllister and the surrounding areas. Our trained technicians continue to provide quality service for brakes, suspension, and alignments, along with 24-hour road service. We carry Goodyear, Michelin, and many other brands to fit your budget. Stop by TNW Tire, Highway 69 and Peaceable Road, McAllister. Call 918-426-6571. Beat the heat with American Go Standard Buffs. Heating and air conditioning and freeze and flare. Your local champs for cool perfection. Proud McAllister Buffalo supporters. Score with financing offers upon approved credit. See dealer for details. Call 918-217-8785 or visit freezeandflare.com to hit it out of the park. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Freeze and Flare, your home comfort, home run. License number 001-44485. Here at Reagan Auto, we offer a variety of services for your vehicle needs. AC and heat repair, brakes, tires, front end repair, alignments, electrical repair, and everything in between. We are proud to offer a select line of engines and transmissions backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide warranty. Give us a call at 918-715-3236 or stop by and speak to one of our advisors about how we can help. 306 East Wyandotte in McAllister from the team at Reagan Auto. Thanks for your business. Hey guys, it's Sam from Sam Wampler's Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula. With two locations to choose from, we have close to 200 vehicles on the ground and coming in. And with vehicles starting at $29.95, we have something for everyone. And if you need parts or service, we are loading up at both locations to serve you better. Plus, with our mobile service van and our pickup and delivery, we can help you with sales and service no matter where you are. So come see us at Sam Wampler's Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula and let us make it happen for you. Number three, Jackson Lowerman. We have a call to the bullpen as after two innings pitched, Max Harmon checks out. Jackson Lowerman comes in as this call to the bullpen brought to you by Jet Tire Service. As here's the first pitch from Jackson Lowerman. It's going to be popped up in the infield. And he got a battle to win. Caden Lesson is going to call off Spencer Stinchcomb. Makes the catch in the infield for out number one. And that's a good start to the game for Lowerman on the mound. Gets Clint Harless to pop up. So again, this pitching change brought to you by Jet Tire Service. They have been serving Pittsburgh County and beyond since 1962. They offer 18 major tire brands. As Lowerman now onto the mound, out to left field from right field is Aiden Shumway. This here's the first pitch of the new batter. It's going to be a called strike one to Brody Ashby. From left to the mound was Lowerman. And from the dugout, who is just DHing to right field is Jordan Clark. That's all the defensive changes we have for the buffs. The 0-1 misses low to... Brody Ashby, who struck out swinging against Harmon to move the count to 1-1. One one. Lowerman on the year has an 0-1-1 record. He does have one save, and that was a six-out save in the same day that Harmon last pitched. So it's been about nine days since he is last thrown in a varsity game as the next pitch is low, two to move the count to 2-1. and one. Again, Buffaloes are missing low more than likely on purpose. You're not wanting to try to get anything up where a guy can drive one out of the park here with the wind today. 
2-1 from Lowerman. It's going to be popped up high over towards Jackson, or rather, uh, that's uh, Jordan Clark. He goes back and makes the catch, and that'll be out number two. Jordan and Clark near the right field line makes the catch. And now bring up Grayson Colbert after back-to-back pop-ups. Colbert walked his first time up. But continuing on with Lowerman, uh, in just three and a third, he has a 6.30 ERA, one strikeout to four walks, a 308 batting average against him. Second on the team in first pitch strikes, though, at 67%. And this one is a first pitch strike again. This one to Grayson Colbert. Strike one. Two down, nobody on the base paths for the Eagles. McAllister trailing Red Oak, 5-0, top of the third inning. The 0-1 misses down low and outside, and the count now, one ball, one strike. And Lowerman, one of the pitchers that work out of the uh, stretch, at all times, doesn't matter if someone's on or not, as the next one's a line drive to the shortstop position. Jumping forward is less now, but can't come up with the catch. If you would have made that one, uh, yeah, you could have put that on SportsCenter. So that'll be a base knock for Grayson Colbert out of the eight hole, and it brings up the nine hole batter, left fielder, number 20, Cade Branscombe, who uh, bunted to the first baseman, Gannon Mullins, for a three unassisted. We got Jimmy Wagner tuning in, says Go Buffs. Yvonne Alford saying go Buffs as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. Let us know where you're listening from on Twitter, at Buff Sports Radio. Again, that is Twitter, at Buff, at Buff Sports Radio. Brian is also tuning in, says, listening in from Florida, let's go Buffs, get the dub. First pitch misses down low to Branscombe, and that'll be ball one. Buffs trying to get the dub here. It'd be their third win in a row, but they have to overcome this 5 nothing deficit. <coughs> Eagles not only, not only looking for their uh, fourth game in a row with a win, as the 1-0 from Lowerman fills the zone for strike one. One ball, one strike. They're looking for their fourth win in a row against the Buffaloes since 2021. Beat them in the Fort Gibson Hilldale Tournament back in 2021 in a run rule. Beat McAllister as the 1-1 will be a ground ball over the right side. Second baseman Stinchcomb fields it cleanly. Flips over to the first baseman Mullins for out number three. Uh, again, beat McAllister in a run rule at Red Oak. It was a close game, 6-4 back in 2022, in which Red Oak still beat McAllister. Buffalo's looking to come back from down 5 nothing right now as we head to the home half of the third. McAllister going to bring up the top of the order when we return here on KNE. My wife makes the best lasagna, even in that old kitchen of ours. She deserves the best kitchen money can buy, but all our cash was tied up. So we went to the Bank N.A. for a loan for our kitchen remodel. And the folks at the Bank N.A. came through for us and our family. Plus, the Bank N.A. is local, so the money stays in town. Call 918-423-2265 or go into the Bank N.A. to get your loan for whatever your family wants or needs. The Bank N.A. Strong, secure, and ready to loan. Member of FDIC. Equal housing lender. Okay! Tire and Auto says, come meet our new owner, Dylan Hackler. We're a Michelin dealer, and we're stocked up with Cooper, Toyo, Hankook, and Max's Buckshot Mutters and Farm and ATV Tires. Tire light on? We can fill your tires with nitrogen. We do brakes, alignments, struts, and oil changes, too. You'll appreciate our fast, friendly service. All work's guaranteed, and estimates are free. Okay, Tire and Auto, 801 North 1st, McAllister. Call 918-423-2121. Good luck, Buffs. Have a great season. Fit and Madness is here, so brush up on your free throws and come shoot for TTNL. You get two shots, sink one, and we pay for half of your TTNL. Sink both, and Fit Nissan pays for all of your TTNL. Hurry up and shoot! Nothing but net. Don't forget to tell them Maddie sent ya. Fit Nissan is your best deal dealer. Learn more at fitnissan.com. So 5 nothing deficit here for the McAllister Buffaloes. It's back to the top of the order. Caden Less now, Gunnar Hodgel, Gannon Mullins. McAllister's had one hit in two innings for the Eagles. They've been able to total up one, two, three, four, five. So they're being out hit five to one right now, the Buffaloes. And it's a 5 0 game in which the Eagles lead now in the home half of the third. Less now swung at the first pitch he saw, grounded out to short. This one's another first pitch he sees, ground out to short. As making the play is Durant over to Colbert for out number one. History repeating itself there to bring up Gunnar Hodgel. So, yeah, Lesnar's only seen two pitches. He's given them both pretty good contact, just straight to the shortstop Durant. Hodgel walked his first time up. And I, I was wondering if this was going to be something that was going to affect McAllister, and I'm always worried about the games that 
you play after you play teams again. There's no disrespect at all, but after you play teams like Tulsa Memorial, it's the first pitch misses to Gunnar Hodgel. It's because Tulsa Memorial they have pitchers that aren't uh, they aren't throwing the same speed or the same kind of uh, junk that you see from play teams like Red Oak, who's a top 20 team in Class A right now. Here's a swing and a miss from Hodgel to move the count to one and one. So after seeing your first live pitching on Tuesday, how do you go seeing uh, or your first live pitching on you know, Tuesday? You see, see Tulsa Memorial for uh, two games as this next pitch is in there for strike two. How do you get back up to speed in the next game against a you know a team as good as Red Oak is? How do you adjust back to that kind of pitching? McCall's are so far with only one hit. The one two, swing and a miss for strike three. Like I said so far the Buffalo is struggling with it though. And it brings up Gannon Mullins. I think personally that getting back from that, like you said, how do you adjust to that, I think is uh, – it's not impossible, but it is very it's t- difficult. It's tough because – It's you're, very difficult. Your timing's all off. You're, you're used to, again, two – I mean, obviously they didn't play 14 innings of baseball on Tuesday. But you go from two full games, a lot of at-bats, as here's the first pitch swing and a miss from Gannon Mullins who flew out to center field his first time up. You go from every at-bat that you had – Seeing slow fastballs, and that was really all you saw. I didn't really see any curveballs, no. changeups, not a lot of those. Just trying to and get the ball over the plate as the 0-1 misses upstairs to ball one. Each and time you play a team, you're going to adjust accordingly to that team. Not that you're not playing you know, your hardest, but just how you go about that team is going to be its own thing. I mean, they're a different animal from team to team, so you have to find a way to adjust. As the 1-1 one, is going to bounce in to move the – count to two balls and one strike, but my thing is, I, yeah, every pitcher you're going to see is going to be a little bit different, but at least, like, if you go from, say, I don't know, you got Broken Bow tomorrow, I mean, there's going to be similar velocity that you see from the pitcher today to tomorrow, I'm guessing. As the next pitch is a called strike two to move the count to two balls and two strikes, at least you're going to see multiple pitches, not just a fastball or maybe a curveball here and there. Right now, Buffalo is trying to adjust to get back to that regular speed that you're going to see for the majority of the season. So here's the 2-2 to Mullins, and he uh, grounds this one to the third baseman, Holly. Holly throws. It's high. Coming off the bag as Mullins is called out at first base after a very delayed call. So Mullins dove for the first base bag. Jumping for the ball was Colbert. The first base umpire and the home plate umpire are going to get together. They're going to say that he didn't touch the bag when he dove for the first base bag, getting around the tag. And when they applied the tag, he called the out. Now, the first base umpire took a long time to be able to come up with his decision, but he eventually ended up calling Mullins out. Mullins is still standing over by Coach Meadows at first base. And no one from McAllister has made their way onto the field. This is going to go down as an E5 if he's on first. And they're going to call him safe. So that's how you go about it then. You make sure that if you really don't know it, go speak with the home plate umpire, see if he had a better angle. And Mullins hustling down the first base line, diving around the tag of the first baseman, Colbert, reaches, uh, allows him to reach first. And I'll go down as an E5 because that was a throw that was high and outside. It brings up Braden Phillips. That's the second error today on the Eagles. Buffalo's trying to make the most out of it. They've had someone on base every inning so far, but haven't brought anyone in. They had runners at first and second with nobody out in the previous inning. Got them to second and third, but again, couldn't drive them in. So here's the first pitch ground ball. Once again to the left side, another chance here. They'll throw to second instead to get the force out, and they do get Mullins. So just one pitch later, the Eagles do get off the field. And it's still a 5 nothing game as the Eagles lead McAllister. Again, 5-0 heading to the top of the fourth inning. You're listening to McAllister Baseball on K. Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub serves great breakfasts all day and juicy burgers too. Angel's Diner also serves brick oven pizza on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 p.m. to close. Angel's Steaks are certified Angus beef and the pub offers beer, wine, and mixed drinks. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner make it Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub. 1402 South George 9 Expressway, McAllister. Call 918-423-2633. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like us on 
on Facebook. Hi, my name is Gail, and I invite you to TNW Tire, an Oklahoma-based company formed in 1987. In 2020, TNW Tire acquired the McAllister location, where Doug and I have worked for over 20 years, providing service to McAllister and the surrounding areas. Our trained technicians continue to provide quality service for brakes, suspension, and alignments, along with 24-hour road service. We carry Goodyear, Michelin, and many other brands to fit your budget. Stop by TNW Tire, Highway 69 and Peaceable Road, McAllister. Call 918-426-6571. Go Buffs! Beat the heat with American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and Freeze and Flare. Your local champs for cool perfection. Proud McAllister Buffalo supporters. Score with financing offers upon approved credit. See dealer for details. Call 918-217-8785 or visit freezeandflare.com to hit it out of the park. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Freeze and Flare. Your home comfort, home run. License number 001 44485. Windy day for baseball, but still it feels amazing out here. We encourage you to come on out to Mike Deke Field as the Buffaloes, though, are trailing 5-0. Could use your support as we head to the top of the fourth inning. Eagles again leading 5-0 as it'll be Reed Kalk up at the plate to lead off for the Eagles 1-2-3. Kalk is one for one, a single and a walk. Outfield not playing really deep right now. So the first pitch is going to be a fastball upstairs for ball one. Again, the wind has picked up even more than it has for a lot of the game today. I don't know how no one has really lost their hat. I think we've only seen one person truly lose their hat, and it was the shortstop for Red Oak, Durant, earlier. So here's the curveball that misses for ball two. Got Shumway in left, Watkins in center, Clark in right. It's 2-0. It is right down Broadway for strike one. Good and Calc, one for one. Lyman gets the signs from Phillips. And here comes the 2-1 pitch. And this one's way too high. Just left the hand awkwardly of Lyman. And the count now, three balls, one strike to Reed Calc. This is not the last game of the week for McAllister. They play again tomorrow as well against Broken Bow. That'll be uh, noon. Noon for McAllister tomorrow against Broken Bow. 3-1 pitch. This one's going to catch the knees, and the count moves now to 3-2. and two. Right at the very bottom of the zone for Lowerman. We'll see what happens with the first batter of the fourth. Slightly open stance here for Calc. The 3-2. And it'll be a... Oh, he almost rung him up. He started to ring him up. And Coach Meadows sees that too. He started to ring him up. The home plate umpire points at himself and says, my bad. He thought he caught the lower outside part of the zone. Does not ring him up. Decides against it. And that'll be a walk. <laughs> so it's a walk to begin the inning for the Red Oak Eagle offense. And it brings up Ty Grogan. who is 0 for 2 with the strikeout and fielder's choice on a bunt. He grounds this one to the left side. It's down the line, but foul. Hodgell was going after it. When, then when he saw that it was foul, brought his hands back, made sure he wouldn't make contact with that. And that's strike one. Okay, Buffaloes have, I believe, rolled five double plays this year. That would have been a, around the horn had Hodgell filled that one. It was hit pretty well by Grogan. 0-1 pitch. Curve ball into the zone. That'll be strike two. Denver Durant's on deck, who is 0 for 1. Rabbit Holly in the hole is 1 for 1 with an RBI. Can Calc with plenty of speed. Lowerman's got to make sure he doesn't get into a rhythm pitching wise. The 0-2. This is upstairs. Ball one. What I mean, I mean you want to get into a rhythm of throwing strikes, but you don't want to get into a rhythm of throwing your pitch at the same time to where the runner can time you up and take off for second with a good jump. Catcher's going to get a little extra velocity on his throw down a second. Runner takes off for second. The pitch is high and outside. The throw to second is high, and snagging it is Stinchcomb, and sliding in with the stolen base is Kalk. A little bit of extra velocity on that throw from Phillips because the wind is at his back. The count's now two and two. And a runner in scoring position for the Eagles. Double play ball now gone. 
2-2 pitch. Ground ball, third base side. This one's playable. Filled it by Hodgel, looks back the runner, fires over to first. That's how you do it. Out number one on the 5-3 ground out. Always important to look the runner back over at second. Know that, hey, if you get too far off the back, I'll get you out. <laughs> Fires across the diamond to get the first out of the fourth inning. Brings up Denver Durant. Back to the lefty here for the Eagles. Walked his first time up. Reached on an E1 that led to an extra two runs for the Eagles. It would have been no runs for the Red Oak Eagles in the top of the second uh, if it hadn't been for that error. As the first pitch is a called strike one. That would have ended the inning at the time. It was runners at first and second with two down. Lowerman looks at second for a long time, but now fires the 0-1. They'll miss a high and outside. One ball, one strike. I think Duran's got a really good approach at the plate. He's got a little bit of an open stance, and he's he. I think he reads pitches well. I think if he sees it outside, he does a good job of letting it travel and drive it the other way. He's not really a straight pool hitter, despite having that little bit of an open stance. The 1-1 is going to miss outside, and count goes to 2-1. In fact, the outfield's not even shifted too far off to the right. They are a little bit. I mean, Watkins is. I mean, if you look over at Shumway, he's way off the line, though, so they're expecting him to not go down the left field line at all. 2-1. Curveball gets the call in the outside corner. <laughs> Phillips, I think, helped out a little bit there, too. Moves the count to 2-2. Two and two. Really stuck that ball. Two balls, two strikes. One out. Runner at second. Lowerman delivers. Swing and a miss for strike three. Jackson Lowerman gets the strikeout. That's a big couple of outs since the Eagles got a runner at second base. Brings up Rabbit Holly. Holly has an RBI single and has walked today. He's got a runner in scoring position. Buffalo's trying to force the Eagles to go scoreless here in the top of the fourth. His first pitch is up and inside for ball one. They scored three in the first, two in the second. Lowerman came in in the third. It's fly out, fly out, single ground out. The 1-0. It's going to miss upstairs, and the count moves to 2-0. Two balls, no strikes. Lowerman fires back again. This one's popped up. Might be trouble. Shallow right center field. Running in is Clark. Clark makes the catch, and that's out number three. So, again, Lowerman working around the uh, runner that got to second with nobody out and keeps him there. The ground out, strike out, fly out. And the score is still 5-0 as we played half a seven-inning ball game. We head to the home half of the fourth with McAllister looking to get on into the uh, scoring column. Only one hit for him so far, and it's from Aiden Shumway, who will lead us off when we come back on KNED. Here at Reagan Auto, we offer a variety of services for your vehicle needs. AC and heat repair, brakes, tires, front end repair, alignments, electrical repair, and everything in between. We are proud to offer a select line of engines and transmissions backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide warranty. Give us a call at 918-715-3236 or stop by and speak to one of our advisors about how we can help. 306 East Wyandotte in McAllister from the team at Reagan Auto. Thanks for your business. Hey guys, it's Sam from Sam Walther's Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula. With two locations to choose from, we have close to 200 vehicles on the ground and coming in. And with vehicles starting at $29.95, we have something for everyone. And if you need parts or service, we are loading up at both locations to serve you better. Plus, with our mobile service van and our pickup and delivery, we can help you with sales and service no matter where you are. So come see us at Sam Walther's Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula and let us make it happen for you. My wife makes the best lasagna, even in that old kitchen of ours. She deserves the best kitchen money can buy, but all our cash was tied up. So we went to the Bank N.A. for a loan for our kitchen remodel, and the folks at the Bank N.A. came through for us and our family. Plus, the Bank N.A. is local, so the money stays in town. Call 918-423-2265 or go into the Bank N.A. to get your loan for whatever your family wants or needs. The Bank N.A. Strong, secure, and ready to loan. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. 
Well, for the majority of the season, it feels like if you need a hit, Aiden Shumway is the guy to go to. Even in games where McAllister's only had one hit, Aiden Shumway has normally been that guy, with the exception of the first game of the year where McAllister got one hit. That was Gunnar Hodgel. First pitch to Aiden Shumway is going to miss upstairs for ball one. He has the only hit so far for the Buffs. In a 5-0 game against the Red Oak Eagles, Reed Kalkin for his uh, fourth inning of work. As they're in the home half of the fourth, there'll be a pop-up over to uh, right field area that's going to go into foul territory, and the count is now 1 1 on Shumway. Can he singled his first time up? It was deep into the hole. Uh, probably could have squeaked into the outfield, but a good back hit by the shortstop Durant kept it in the infield for the infield single. As the 1 1 is going to bounce. I mean, Shumway's line is just insane. 472 batting average, all coming into today, by the way. 558 on base percentage. A 583 slugging percentage as this one's going to be popped up. Might be playable. Foul territory and dropping before the second baseman, Harless, can get to the ball. The count goes to 2-2. Two and two. They're trying to work Shumway outside here, but Shumway, one thing, if you ever look at a spread chart, he really hits it to all parts of the field. He's got a really good approach up at the plate. 89% contact percentage. It's good all the way around. Four extra base hits on the year. Four multi-hit games. Here's the 2-2 to Shumway. This will miss outside. And the count moves to full with three balls and two strikes. He's already extended his hit streak to 10 in a row with his last base hit. 3-2 pitch. This one's going to miss, and he draws the walk. <laughs> he is in a different universe right now when it comes to hitting the baseball. Shumway will go 90 feet down to the first base bag to talk to Assistant coach Troy Meadows, and that'll bring up batting, Spencer Stinchcomb. He reached safely on an E6, Stinchcomb. which again was kind of it was borderline. Depends on what, how you see how that ball bounced. Again, it, it looked to me like it had some English. So we have a pickoff over to first. Back in his last time up, it was one hopper to the shortstop, and it looked like it was going to go directly beh behind the second base bag. But then it spun on contact with the turf and worked its way to where the original shortstop position was at. First pitch is going to be popped up in the infield, though. This one's a little bit easier. Second baseman, Harless, underneath that makes the easy can to corn catch. And that'll be out number one. McAllister has just kept on putting the ball in the air. And like I said earlier today, it might be one of those times where you, you know, decide you might want to put the ball in the air. But <laughs> McAllister hasn't driven a ball. I think there's only been one that's gone anywhere near the warning track, and it was Mullins' first at bat that was out to center field. It's a pickoff over to first. Great job by Colbert as he's able to keep the ball in front. Cameraman didn't catch that one, did he? <laughs> Not that time. Pickoff over to first again. I caught that one. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning a little bit more when to expect. Them. I'm starting to pick up certain tells for pitchers. Um, obviously, I got the best tells with McAllister because we do all their games. I don't know if you knew that, Brennan. First pitch to Lowerman is upstairs of ball one. Lowerman struck out swinging his first time up. No, going back to the ground out thing. Actually, McAllister's grounded out three times today. That's three out of their uh, ten outs have been ground outs. But two from Les now, one from Phillips. one -oh. It's a high fly ball carrying towards left field. Branscombe gets underneath. It doesn't carry enough. And that will be caught easily by Branscombe for out number two. And that will bring up Ethan Watkins. Ethan Watkins was out on an infield fly rule on a ball that, again, with the wind blowing the way that it is, landed in the outfield. But, again, that doesn't matter any at all when it comes to the rule. But he'll dig into the box. Buffalo still trailing 5-0, bottom of the fourth inning. Another pickoff over to first base in which Shumway's back in safely. Coming set, Kalk delivers, and this one in there for a strike. Again, Reed Kalk has not had anyone score on him this year. Not, And I'm not just counting earned runs. That means runs total, no one has scored on him. He's trying to keep it that way. I don't know if the buffs have been shut out this year, too. Next pitch, Watkins will watch this one miss a little high. Count now one and one. Let's see the... 
Losses that, yeah, out, they have not been shut out this year. As we're about halfway through this game, they're kind of in danger of it. Another pick off to first. They're trying to keep Shumway out of scoring position. Watkins, he has hits in four out of his last five games. He has reached safely in every game this year but two. Against Tulsa Memorial in the two games, he was two for three with three RBIs, both of his hits, extra base hits. 1-1 one, one pitch. Hard hit, line drive, deep center field, going towards the warning track. It'll hit off the bottom of the wall. Rounding second, Shumway. They're going to try to wave him home. The throw hits the cutoff man. The throw to the plate will be not in time. RBI double by Ethan Watkins. A fireball of a line drive off the bottom of the batter's eye in center field. Gives the Buffaloes their first run of the game here in the bottom of the fourth. That might be the hardest hit ball by a Buffalo batter this season. That is a line drive, and there's no fly ball to that. That is a line drive off the bottom of the batter's eye. What a hit by Ethan Watkins. Now he's in scoring position. Clark trying to trade places with him. Shows bunt, pulls back. It's going to miss up high for ball one. Not a bad idea that third baseman Hawley was playing really deep. If he can get it down the line, that's base now. Now Hawley, seeing that he showed bunt, comes in on the infield turf. Next pitch, chopper, third base side, well foul. And the count is 1-1 on Jordan Clark. So Watkins hoping to be what the Buffaloes needed, a little bit of a spark to their offense. I mean, that's already what he is, but hopefully that spark becomes a fire for the Buffaloes. The 1-1. Swing and a miss for strike two. Even if they don't bring him in, maybe that's something for the Buffs going forward into the fifth, sixth, and seventh innings. Down 5-1 to the Eagles. Only the second hit of the day for the Buffs, that RBI double by Watkins. First run scored off of Reed Kalk this year. 1-2. Runner takes off for third. The pitch is a swing and a miss for strike three. So the Buffaloes do score a run on the smoke show of a double by Ethan Watkins to bring in, uh, at the time, Aiden Shumway. Scored him from first. It's 5-1. McAllister still has more work to do as we head to the top of the fifth inning. Again, 5-1. Red Oak leads McAllister here on K. <laughs> Tire and Auto says, come meet our new owner, Dylan Hackler. We're a Michelin dealer, and we're stocked up with Cooper, Toyo, Hankook, and Max's Buckshot Mutters and Farm and ATV Tires. Tire light on? We can fill your tires with nitrogen. We do brakes, alignments, struts, and oil changes, too. You'll appreciate our fast, friendly service. All work's guaranteed, and estimates are free. Okay, Tire and Auto, 801 North 1st, McAllister. Call 918-423-2121. Good luck, Buffs. Have a great season. This is here, so brush up on your free throws and come shoot for TTNL. You get two shots, sink one, and we pay for half of your TTNL. Sink both, and Fit Nissan pays for all of your TTNL. Hurry up and shoot! Nothing but net. Don't forget to tell him Maddie sent ya. Fit Nissan is your best deal dealer. Learn more at fitnissan.com. Angels. Angels Diner Steakhouse and Pub serves great breakfasts all day and juicy burgers too. Angels Diner also serves brick oven pizza on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 p.m. to close. Angels Steaks are certified Angus beef and the pub offers beer, wine, and mixed drinks. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner make it Angels Diner Steakhouse and Pub. 1402 South George 9 Expressway, McAllister. Call 918-423-2633. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like us on Facebook. The the Eagles, five, to the top of the fifth inning we go. McAllister gets on the scoreboard in the bottom of the fourth. Again, still more work to do. We head to the, again, top of the fifth inning. It'll be, looks like the five, six, seven hole batter. Starting off with Simon Montgomery, who is two for two with two RBIs. First pitch to him will be a curveball outside corner. Good pitch from Jackson Lowerman in for his third inning of work for a called strike. Montgomery hit an RBI double his first time up, then an RBI single his last time up. It's the 0-1. It's going to be swung on and missed for strike two, a little bit behind on the fastball there from Jackson. And the count goes to 0-2. Lowerman gets the five-hole batter, Montgomery. The pitch. will miss up and outside. Now one ball, two strikes here on Montgomery. 
Again, this is the fourth time McAllister has played Red Oak in the last three seasons to, after taking the hiatus a year ago. The one-two pitch is going to hit him. Ducked for cover, and the curveball did not get back inside. It was caught by Phillips, but it did nick the right-handed batter, Cy Montgomery, and that will be a hit-by-pitch to be able to begin this top of the fifth for Red Oak. But Red Oak has had some change in leadership over the last few years. Out of the, again, three years that McAllister has played Red Oak going back the last four years, there have been three different head coaches for the Eagles. And like I said, Lane Grogan, he is from uh, from Red Oak. Like I said, this is alma mater, played for Carl Albert State College in Arkansas Fort Smith after he left Red Oak uh, due to graduation. Was the All-Stater for Red Oak back in 2016. Won three rings as a player. That was in 2013 as freshman season, 2014 as sophomore. His first pitch called strike to the lefty Clint Harless. And then his senior year, 2016, won it as well. So trying to bring that state championship back over to the Eagles. Good start to the season at 11-4, right now 16th in Class A. As the next pitch, curveball, outside corner, strike two. Eagles are looking really good. Again, uh, three of their losses have been to top 10 2A teams, so they're a very competitive team, uh, lost by only one to the top-ranked team in, in 2A, Oktahaw, and we know how good Oktahaw is. The 0-2, curveball does not get the letters, and the count now moves to 1-2. It looked a little high to me anyway. But McAllister will find out how good Oktahaw is. They play them later on this year. I think it's the last, either last week or second to last week in the month of April they'll play them. The 1-2, this one will miss upstairs with the fastball, and the count is now 2-2. Two and two. In 5-1, Red Oak. Top of the fifth, runner at first, with nobody out. Clouds have started to move away. You can actually see, if you're here at Mike Deke Field, you can actually see the clouds move with the wind across the sky. 2-2. Two -two. Half-hearted line drive over to shallow left center field that's going to land and one hop over to uh, Aiden Shumway, and that's a perfect piece of hitting there. Again, didn't really swing it hard, but you don't have to to get on base. Let that ball travel, got the barrel, and it flew all the way to a one-hopper to our left fielder. So Harless with his first base hit of the day brings up Brody Ashby. And the Eagles are in business. Runners at first and second with nobody out of bunting situation here for the Eagles, and they've showed bunt a lot today so far. Wouldn't be surprised if they do it here. Mullen's already playing in. They show bunt, pull back as the curveball misses low for ball one. Ashby has struck out swinging and flown out to right. You can wind a steady 40 mile per hour wind gust pretty much all day today. Is blowing out towards left center field. Already showing bunt. Pulls back because it's a called strike. One ball, one strike. And I'm hearing there from Coach Grogan. I think he missed up on his signs there. I think he's I think he the way based on what I could hear was Grogan and our Ashby didn't get the signs that Grogan was calling out. Counts one and one. And here's the pitch. Does get it down as he'll roll towards the third base line. It's a perfect bunt. Lowerman still grabs and fires over to first in time to be able to get the out. That was a heck of a bunt by Brody Ashby. Lowerman had to race down to the third base line to be able to grab that as it rode the line and fire out the runner at first base. But again, it's a sack bunt for Brody Ashby. Does its job. And as he ended up getting it to Spencer Stinchcomb, brings up Grayson Colbert, who is one for one, a walk and a single. The infield comes on in on the infield turf, so they're all playing in, trying to get a runner coming home if he decides to go that way. First pitch, curveball ball, and there's strike one. Buffs trailing 5-1. Lowerman has worked two scoreless innings, but is in danger here. Needs to pull a Houdini act against the bottom of the order. Eight and nine hole batters. But Colbert already with the single. One down, top of the fifth. Lowerman looks and delivers. This one's going to miss outside. One ball, one strike. Harmon only... Went two innings for McAllister, but he threw enough pitches to where he cannot pitch tomorrow, I believe. As we're going to be having a mound visit here. Braden Phillips is going to talk to Jackson Lowerman for just a split second. 
Now, I actually got a, a, a funny story to tell you about Memphis. Now, Austin, I know that you were speaking about uh, this the other day, about what you think catchers talk to pitchers about when they go speak to them on the mound. And I actually have a funny story that actually happened in a, uh, in a Yankees game one time. I heard this story wanted to share it. So here's the next pitch. This is down low and outside. And the count is now 2-1. and one. But it was Lefty Gomez of the Yankees. He always spoke in awe of Jimmy Fox. All right? Again, that's back in the day. <laughs> I know any young fans out there don't know who those guys are at all. As here comes the 2-1 from Lowerman. And this one misses down low for ball three. Well, in one game, Fox came to the plate, and the catcher went through all the signs. Gomez shook them all off. So the catcher went through them again, and Gomez again shook them all off. The catcher went to the mound and said, what do you want to throw to him? And Gomez says, I don't want to throw him anything. <laughs> We'll continue on after this 3-1 pitch. Here it comes. And this one's going to bounce. It gets behind Phillips. Might be a play at the plate, and they're going to throw, and Jackson can't apply the tag. And that will lead to a 6-1 ball game. As coming in to score was the runner at third. Runner advances from second over third, and it's a 6-1 ball game. That's a walk to Grayson Colbert, brings up Cade Branscombe, who's over two. But again, the catcher responded to Gomez after he said, I don't want to throw him anything. He said, you have to throw him something. And Gomez says, well, maybe if we stall long enough, he'll get tired of waiting and leave. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, conversations like that probably happen all the time. Yeah, that's an actual conversation. He didn't want to throw him anything, so he just shook them all off in a real, actual Major League Baseball game. Show him bunt and tries to get it down and fouls it off, and that'll be... Strike one, but the pass ball allows to another run scored here for the Eagles. Runners at the corners for Red Oak. As McAllister waited four innings to get that one run, and then the very next half inning, the Eagles take it right back. 6-1 game, still only one down. Middle infield goes back to playing double play depth. The runner does not take off as the next pitch is a swing and a miss for strike two. 0-2 on Branscombe, who has bunted out and grounded out to second. So it's gone to the right side both times. Top of the order is lurking on deck. 0-2 from Lowerman. Fastball low and outside. And the count now 1-2. and two. Six one game. Lowerman likes to be seized from Phillips. Looks over at first base. Not much of a lead. One two. And this will be fought off at the plate. Fighting it off, Cade Branscombe. And we'll do it again at one and two. So Lowerman gets the ball back, trying to again limit the damage to only one run so far. It was on that pass ball. Lowerman looks at third, takes a deep breath, and the pitch. This one's in the turf. Phillips, great job being a wall and keeping that in front, keeping it from going to the backstop. And if you've never been to Mike Deke Field, maybe it's some Red Oak fans tuning in, it's not a very deep backstop, but it's enough to where if it bounces away from the catcher well enough, or if it just kind of catches the padding well enough, you can score from third. But a lot of times it'll bounce straight back. 2-2 pitch from Jackson. Ground ball left side. It's going to get into the hole. It's going to score a run. Base knock for Cade Branscombe. And it's a 7-1 ball game. RBI single and the top of the order is now up. 6 out of the 9 Eagles batters have gotten a base hit for the Eagles today. To the plate for Red Oak. Number 25, Reed. Let's see. Looks like seven out of the nine batters for the Eagles have reached base safely. Now runner, runners at first and second for Reed Kalk, who is one for one with a single and two walks. Top of the fifth inning. First pitch in there, strike one. Kalk took the very first pitch of the game and hit a single with it. And like I said, his last two plate appearances, he drew walks. Buffs need a double play ball like they need air to breathe. The next pitch, curveball, in there, strike two. That last hit by Branscombe was deep into the hole. It 
uh, was between the third baseman Hodgel and the shortstop Lust now no chance even if they dove for it there was no chance they were going to get to that ball hit hard enough there by Branscombe on the last at bat the 0-2 swing and a miss for strike three got him with a heater Jackson Lowerman blows it by him good morning good afternoon good night gets Reed Calc on three pitches that brings up Ty Grogan Buffalo is trying to keep it at a six run game right now it's 7-1 and it brings up Ty Grogan who is 0 for 3 he has struck out there was a fielder's choice on a bunt attempt as Harmon threw to third to get the lead runner. And then he grounded out to the third baseman, Hodgel. Still runners at first and second. Two down. 7-1 McAllister trails. As this one's popped up. Outfield, center field area. Watkins comes in, loses his hat, but makes the catch. And that'll be out number three. Buffalo scored one run in the fourth, but the Eagles... Bounce back and then get an extra one. They score two in the top of the fifth to extend their lead to 7-1. to one. McAllister still more work to do, and they have the top of the order to try and do it. You're listening to McAllister Baseball on KNED. Hi, my name is Gail, and I invite you to t w Tire, an Oklahoma-based company formed in 1987. In 2020, t w Tire acquired the McAllister location, where Doug and I have worked for over 20 years, providing service to McAllister and the surrounding areas. Our trained technicians continue to provide quality service for brakes, suspension, and alignments, along with 24-hour road service. We carry Goodyear, Michelin, and many other brands to fit your budget. Stop by t w Tire, Highway 69 and Peaceable Road, McAllister. Call 918-426-6571. Beat the heat Go Buffs. With American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and Freeze and Flare. Your local champs for cool perfection. Proud McAllister Buffalo supporters. Score with financing offers upon approved credit. See dealer for details. Call 918-217-8785 or visit freezeandflare.com to hit it out of the park. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Freeze and Flare. Your home comfort, home run. License number 001-44485. Here at Reagan Auto, we offer a variety of services for your vehicle needs. AC and heat repair, brakes, tires, front end repair, alignments, electrical repair, and everything in between. We are proud to offer a select line of engines and transmissions backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide warranty. Give us a call at 918-715-3236 or stop by and speak to one of our advisors about how we can help. 306 East Wyandotte in McAllister. From the team at Reagan Auto, thanks for your business. Leading off for the Buffaloes, number two, Caden. We now head to the bottom of the fifth inning. McAllister is trailing 7-1 to one to the Red Oak Eagles. As it'll be Caden Less now, Gunnar Hodgel, Gannon Mullins, 1-2-3 for the Buffs. Trying to get something started here. It's the first pitch. We'll catch the knees for strike one. Less now his first pitch swinging at his last two at-bats. Both were grand outs at the shortstop, so that's only the third pitch he's seen so far today. And it was a called strike at the knees. Red, uh, Reed Kalk has been excellent on the mound as this curveball bounces into the catcher, uh, Grogan, for ball one. He's not trying to do too much, but he's also hitting his spots exactly where he wants it. He stayed low in the zone. McAllister hasn't had a chance to drive a lot of pitches. The 1-1 one, one misses upstairs, and now the count moves in favor of Lesnow to 2-1. and one. Lesnow, he increased his batting average from 244 before Tulsa Memorial to 326 after going five for five as that one hits in the turf to move to count the three to one, three and one. In five for five, he has hits in nine out of his last 10, including three in a row. He's batting 361 in his last 10 games. Three one, as he swings and this one was hit weirdly off the bat and it rolls backward toward the Red Oak uh, dugout. I think he hit off the very top of the bat. He was seeing red on that ball. I think he's – thought he might have ended up uh, cutting the ball. First base umpire got it, and I rubbed it a little bit and threw, throws it back over to the pitcher, Calc. The count is full at three and two. Calc fires. It's going to be upstairs, and that will be ball four. So, Les now works a walk if McAllister's going to get back into the game. Down six right now. They need base runners. That's a kind of like a dub Brandon moment, but they need it. Gunnar Hodgel is 0 for 1 coming up to the plate. You said that he was seeing red right now. I think he was seeing black and gold. That might be your worst joke you've ever made. <laughs> Less now tied for the team lead in stolen bases. He's also who you want if you want to give him the scoring position. We'll see if he tries taking it, though, early. His first pitch will miss upstairs for ball one. 
Again, Hodgel coming into today, 359 batting average, good for second on the team, 449 on base percentage. As here's a pickoff over to first by Kalk. Before this game, in what, 15 games for the Eagles coming into today, Kalk had only pitched in eight innings, so this is his fifth inning of work. We'll pick off over to first again. This one, great job by Colbert. There's been about three different times, though, that Kalk has thrown it into the turf, but Colbert has kept it in front and kept a runner from going to second base. 7-1 <coughs> Buffalo's trail. 1-0 count to Hodgel. The pitch. Will miss upstairs and count now 2-0. And there'll be a mound visit. We'll see if it's a mound visit or a pitching change, but it's going to be Lane. I th believe that's Coach Grogan going to speak with his pitcher. We'll take a 30-second break and be back here on KNED. Hey guys, it's Sam from Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula. With two locations to choose from, we have close to 200 vehicles on the ground and coming in. And with vehicles starting at $29.95, we have something for everyone. And if you need parts or service, we are loading up at both locations to serve you better. Plus, with our mobile service van and our pickup and delivery, we can help you with sales and service no matter where you are. So come see us at Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula and let us make it happen for you. So we're back as here comes the 2-0 pitch, and it's going to be in there for a strike from Calc after the uh, mound visit with, I believe, head coach Lane Grogan. Runner at first, nobody out. Bottom of the fifth inning, McCall's trailing 7-1. Gunnar Hodgel up at the plate against Reed Calkin for his fifth inning. As the one-strike pitch is swung on and missed for strike two, and now the count after a quick two balls, no strikes, goes to 2-2. Two and two. Calc has been in the zone. He's only walked two, ba or rather three batters. It's another pickoff to first in which Les now is back in. 2-2 on Hodgel. Big lead by Les now. 2-2, Les now takes off. The pitch is high. The third on to second is wide right, but what a diving stop by the second baseman, Harless. If that goes by Harless, that's an extra base for Les now. And for the senior, Caden Lust, now 12th stolen base of the year. He's back on top after Shumway tied it up uh, with his 11th stolen base earlier in the game. Counts now full at 3 and 2. His last pitch missed high. And the payoff. That will miss high as well, so it's back to back walks after only having two coming into this inning by Kalk. Brings up Gannon Mullins. First and second, nobody out. The only uh, Buffalo that has a home run this year is Gannon Mullins, and he has two of them. And it was at this ballpark with, I wouldn't say this much wind, but with wind blowing to the left field area too. He hit one out. This is a brand new ball game. First pitch to Mullins, and he'll watch it miss up high. Here's another thing that McAllister's offense wants to take note of. Every time that Calcas seems to be missing now, he's missing upstairs. So if he leaves one high, those are the ones that you can really drive to the outfield area towards the wall, over the wall. 1-0, Lesnar takes off at third. What a scoop, the third, uh, the catcher throws it over to third, almost sliding past the bag is Les now. But he's able to get there with the stolen base, falling behind him is Gunnar Hodgel to take second. What a jump by Les now, but he gets over to third base. But the scoop by Grogan, behind home plate, nearly led to a throw out over at third. Good scoop by the third baseman, Holly too. Next pitch, in there for a strike. Count now one ball, I believe that's one ball, one strike. No, two balls, one strike, thank you. Two and one. Mullins with 11 RBI on the year, 2-1. Missing up stairs again. The count's now three and one on Mullins. In 11 RBI, two home runs, batting 316 with runners and scoring that 60% of Mullins' hits on the year. Hitters count 3-1, the pitch. That one's up high as well. Again, it's been Calc just missing high with all the pitches. And now load the bases for the Buffaloes with nobody out. They got to get something out of this. Back to back to back walks. This base is loaded alert is brought to you by Pop's Kettle Corn in Old Town. Choose your flavor of kettle corn or try their freshly made pork rinds at Pop's Kettle Corn in Old Town. Braden Phillips comes up. 0 for 2 on the day, but trying to come up with a big hit for the Buffs. First pitch. 
Ground ball left side, deep into the hole, throwing over to third. It'll be a fielder's choice. And that'll be a run score, though, here for Braden Phillips as he does bring in Lust now. It's going to be a 6-5 fielder's choice. I swear no one grounds into more fielder's choices, though, than Phillips. He puts the ball in play often. It just, to the play for McAllister. He just gets into some bad luck there. That's a good play by the shortstop Durant to get it over to Holly to get the lead runner at third. McAllister now cuts the deficit to 7-2. to two. Aiden Shumway, one for one so far, single and a walk. Trying to keep this thing rolling as Calc steps off. So again, we have Phillips at first and Mullins at second. One down, bottom of the fifth, 7-2 McAllister trails. First pitch. Line drive, left center field. Shumway continues to rank. They're going to wave home Mullins. He will score. The throw to third is online, but it gets past the third baseman after a couple of hops and goes towards the McAllister dugout. Shumway is on complete fire right now. And there are no signs of cooling off. It's an RBI double by Aiden Shumway. And McAllister's down 7-3. to three. His fifth multi-hit game this season. Out of 14 games for the Buffs. He's on another planet. Spencer Stinchcomb now trying to drive in the two runs of second and third. And Stinchcomb has been really good with runners and scoring. He's batting 526. Get this, 83% of his hits on the year with runners and scoring. First pitch bouncing in as Grogan bodies it up and keeps the runner from coming home. Again, that's Phillips at third and Shumway at second. One down, bottom of the fifth. The Buffaloes respond with a two spot from the Eagles with a two spot of their own and looking to continue to do damage. The 1 0 misses high for ball two. Stinchcomb coming in today, leads the team with RBIs with 12. Batting 333 coming into today as well. The 2 0 misses upstairs, ball three. Three balls, no strikes to Stinchcomb. Buffaloes didn't score anything in their first three innings. So here's the 3-0 again, and this one will fill the zone for strike one. Again, no runs in the first three. Only one hit in the first three innings for the Buffs. They've scored three runs in their last two, fourth and fifth. Calc, hitters count, 3-1. Misses upstairs, and it's another walk. A walk to Spencer Stinchcomb. It will load the bases again. And now, the tying run is at the plate. McAllister trailed 7-1 coming into this inning, and now they have the bases loaded again. Since we already had a bases loaded alert once in this inning, again, we don't need to do it again. Again, that's a once per inning, but thank you to Pop Scuttlehorn for sponsoring that. Lowerman digs in. 0 for 2 on the day with a strikeout and a flyout to left. Out of the stretch, Calc like he's been all day. First pitch. Cross the letters for a strike. Wind still blowing hard at the left center field, around 30, 35 mile per hour wind gusts. I will say the wind has started to shift a little bit. Not completely, but you can every now and then you'll get a wind gust that's kind of gone on its own. 0 1. Big cut from Lowerman. Fouls it straight back into the netting, and the count is 0 2. One down for McAllister. Ethan Watkins is on deck, who had the loudest hit for the Buffs. An RBI double on a line drive that never really looked like it rose. It just went straight to the bottom of the batter's eye in center field. Right now, Lowerman way down in the count, 0-2. Kalk delivers. This one's going to miss up and outside, and it's now one ball, two strikes. Leaves are starting to blow all onto the field. Primarily in the infield. Counts 1-2 on Jackson. Has done great in relief. And time will be called by Jackson. After the Eagles scored an early five runs, he did have two scoreless before the Eagles got back on the board in the fifth with two. McAllister has answered back with two, but obviously want more, and this is a great situation to do it. One, two. Pops it up. It's going to be playable. 
in foul territory. Comes back in fair, but it lands foul. Again, if it's fair, it's an infield fly rule, but it lands foul. That thing was going to go all the way towards the netting over here by the press box, and then the wind pushed it back towards that left McAllister baseball logo, and it landed about two feet foul. If it was two feet to the right, that's an infield fly rule. Batter is out. So what luck there by Lowerman. Trying to make the most out of it, though. Count's still 1-2. Calc delivers. This pitch is going to miss up and inside. Two balls, two strikes to Lowerman. Again, 75% of his hits with runners in scoring. As a situation, well, I think this would count. <laughs> Base is loaded. 2-2 two -two to Lowerman. Line drive, left center field. This one will. One hop. Lowerman's got the base knock. And it's bobbled by the left fielder, Branscomb. Two runs are going to score. This might be an inside the Parker. Three runs score. Lowerman will get to third base. And that makes it a 7-6 game with one swing of the bat. I'll go down as a two RBI double and E7 brought in the third run. But Jackson Lowerman with the biggest hit of the day for the Buffaloes. From 7-1 to one to 7-6, to six, and that'll be it for Reed Kalk. We'll take a break and we'll come back with still only one down tying run 90 feet away. You're listening to McAllister Baseball here on K. My wife makes the best lasagna, even in that old kitchen of ours. She deserves the best kitchen money can buy, but all our cash was tied up. So we went to the Bank N.A. for a loan for our kitchen remodel, and the folks at the Bank N.A. came through for us and our family. Plus, the Bank N.A. is local, so the money stays in town. Call 918-423-2265 or go into the Bank N.A. to get your loan for whatever your family wants or needs. The Bank N.A. Strong, secure, and ready to loan. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Okay! Tire and Auto says, come meet our new owner, Dylan Hackler. We're a Michelin dealer, and we're stocked up with Cooper, Toyo, Hankook, and Max's Buckshot Mutters and Farm and ATV Tires. Tire light on? We can fill your tires with nitrogen. We do brakes, alignments, struts, and oil changes, too. You'll appreciate our fast, friendly service. All work's guaranteed, and estimates are free. Okay, Tire and Auto, 801 North 1st, McAllister. Call 918-423-2121. Good luck, Buffs. Have a great season. Fit and Madness is here, so brush up on your free throws and come shoot for TTNL. You get two shots, sink one, and we pay for half of your TTNL. Sink both, and Fit Nissan pays for all of your TTNL. Hurry up and shoot! Nothing but net. Don't forget to tell them Maddie sent ya. Fit Nissan is your best deal dealer. Learn more at fitnissan.com. We have a call the bullpen for the Red Oak Eagles. It's called the Bullpen, brought to you by Jet Tire Service. They have been serving Pittsburgh County and beyond since 1962. They offer 18 major tire brands. From being the DH now to being the pitcher is number 21, Brody Ashby, for the Red Oak Eagles. Ashby is pitching 13 innings, a 3.23 ERA, 18 strikeouts to four walks, and just a 191 batting average against him. The Buffaloes have come alive here in the bottom of the fifth inning. They have scored five runs. Jackson Lowerman with a two RBI double reaching to third on an E7 with another run scoring there has made this a whole new ball game. Time run 90 feet away for Ethan Watkins who is one for two with an RBI double off the bottom of the wall in center field. Can McAllister come all the way back in one inning alone from down 7-1? Ashby's first pitch pops it up way high and way out of play. Someone needs to yell four for someone walking the track around. <laughs> I wonder, has anyone ever gotten, like, hit? I don't know. We need to we need to put out a poll. Have you gotten hit while walking around the I don't think no one's gotten injured. But, you know what I mean? Like, maybe it hit their foot. The 0-1 misses high, and the count moves to 1-1. One one. Watkins now has hits in five out of his last six with the RBI double he had in the previous inning. Eagles have scored in three out of their five. McAllister scored in two out of their five. But, again, six runs in the last two. 1-1. One, one. This one's going to bounce in. Lowerman tried getting a good jump, had it gone past Grogan. But he's been just an absolute wall behind home plate. Counts 2-1 and one here to Watkins. Infield is playing in, trying to cut down the runner at third. That would be the tying run. 2-1. Big cut from Watkins. Came up empty. Counts now 2-2. Two and two. By the way, wasn't a bat by Jackson Lowerman. Fouled off a lot of tough pitches. 
got himself into a good count, and then drove it down the left field line to be able to drive in those runs. 2-2 two -two from Ashby. Well, get behind the catcher. Here comes the tying run. Lowerman's going to score, and the Buffaloes have come all the way back. It's 7-7 here in the heartland. It was a 7-1 game, and with just one half inning, we're knotted up again for the first time since, well, what is that, the third batter of the game, fourth batter of the game. Two-strike pitch. Ground ball left side. Filled the cleanly by the third baseman, Holly. Throws across the diamond, gets the out. That'll be out number two. And that brings up Jordan Clark. Actually, that brings up Jackson Morgan. Jackson Morgan is going to pinch hit for Jordan Clark. Morgan has had three plate appearances. He has reached base safely all three times. He's technically zero for zero with two walks and a hit by pitch. For the Buffaloes, number 20. So Morgan going to be digging into the box Morgan. with two down in the bottom of the fifth inning. Nobody on base. Brody Ashby's windup and the first pitch. It's going to be below the knees for ball one. Top of the order is on deck. Again, Morgan hitting for Clark out of the nine hole. The 1-0 pitch. This one's going to clip the knees. And that'll be strike one. One ball, one strike. One, one from Ashby. This one's going to bounce in. Two balls, one strike. Can Ashby 18 strikeouts to four walks. Again, I mentioned that right when he came in. Not a lot of free passes. Again, not a lot of free passes given up by Calc going into this game either. It's the 2-1. It's going to be fouled off. The count now moves to 2-2. Two and two. Deuces wild here for Jackson Morgan trying to restart it up with two down. In a tie game 7-7. Seven, seven. If you went, I don't know, if you went just to you know, go get something to eat, you came back and then you flipped on YouTube or you listened to the radio or whatever and you just took about 10 minutes away, it's a totally different game than it was 10 minutes ago. 2-2 two, two pitch. Missing low, ball three. Full count to Jackson Morgan. Three balls, two strikes. Top of the order, Caden Less now on deck, who's 0 for 2 with two ground outs and a walk. Ashby, the payoff. And again, fouling it off, staying alive is Morgan. 3 2 the count. I'm telling you, this McAllister team, senior driven, a lot of them on there, is a gritty, gritty team. 3-2. Swing and a miss for strike three, but the Buffaloes bring up nine batters and they score six runs. As they tie it up 7-7, seven, seven, it is a brand new game. As we get to the top of the sixth inning, you're listening to McAllister Baseball here on K. Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub serves great breakfasts all day and juicy burgers too. Angel's Diner also serves brick oven pizza on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 p.m. to close. Angel's Steaks are certified Angus beef and the pub offers beer, wine, and mixed drinks. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner make it Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub. 1402 South George 9 Expressway, McAllister. Call 918-423-2633. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like us on Hi, Facebook. my name is Gail, and I invite you to T&W Tire, an Oklahoma-based company formed in 1987. In 2020, T&W Tire acquired the McAllister location, where Doug and I have worked for over 20 years, providing service to McAllister and the surrounding areas. Our trained technicians continue to provide quality service for brakes, suspension, and alignments, along with 24-hour road service. We carry Goodyear, Michelin, and many other brands to fit your budget. Stop by T&W Tire, Highway 69 and Peaceable Road, McAllister. Call 918-426-6571. Go Buffs! Welcome back to Mike Deke Field here in McAllister, Oklahoma. The McAllister Buffaloes, again, if you just now are now joining us, oh, they were down 7-1 to one going into the previous half inning. They have tied it up. It is 7-7 seven to seven as we now head to the top of the sixth. And so it's, it's been a little while since Jackson Lowerman last pitched after that big-time inning featuring a lot of hits for McAllister. It brings up the shortstop number one, Denver Durant. So it's the heart of the order up for the Eagles to try to get their lead back. Durant is over two with a walk, and reached on by an error and a strikeout. Lowerman's first pitch of the six will be popped up. Shallow left field, 
Les now going back, calling him off as Shumway, makes the catch around that area and shallow left center for out number one. So one pitch, one out. Great start to the sixth for Jackson Lowerman. I'm sure I mentioned this just about once a year, but it, that is one thing that is really cool and unique about the sport of baseball. Uh, from the beginning, you know, you could be playing a certain way, and then by the end of it, you could do a total 360, and the only difference is, is an inning. Rabbit Holly comes up. Uh, first pitch to Holly is upstairs for ball one with one down, nobody on. Buffalo's tied up 7 7 with the Eagles. To build off your point, that's why I kind of love baseball, <laughs> is because there's no shot clock. Uh, you, ha you can't just dribble out the clock as the 1 0 catches the outside corner for strike one, or there's really no clock. That's one of the few games where you don't have a running clock. It's just innings. You have to get three outs. The team could be down by 13, but if you can't throw strikes and get the final three outs, you can't earn the win. You get the other chance, they're still in it for the other team. As this one's fouled off to the left side, and the count goes to one and two. I mean, a 7-1 deficit, I'd say in Major League Baseball, is the equivalent of a... I mean, that's a 20-point that's a deficit in, if you're looking like in basketball reference. That's a, that's a three-touchdown deficit in terms, if you want to put in football terms. One-two. Curveball hits him on the left arm. Hit the left arm of Rabbit Holly, the cleanup hitter, on a 1-2 pitch. Now put a runner at first. And it brings up Cy Montgomery, who has reached base safely all three times. I will say McAllister is definitely going to have to dial in, though, just because you came back from a 3-7 you know, deficit. 7-1 deficit. Seven, yeah, my, my bad. I'm getting my numbers mixed up. But you know what I'm talking about. 7-1 deficit right. doesn't mean that you can just let it go. Montgomery is, has an RBI double, an RBI single, and he's been hit by a pitch. Been the most dangerous batter in the Eagle lineup so far. He's got a runner at first with one down in a tie game, 7-7, seven, seven, top of the sixth. Lowerman takes his time and fires. First pitch is going to be a pop-up in the infield right side. Stinchcomb calls off Mullins and tries to race the runner <laughs> back over to first base, uh, but can't get there in time. But still, it's going to be a catch made by Spencer Stinchcomb, who called off Mullins for out number two. He dialed in. I was like, I'm going to get you. <laughs> I'm going to get you. Come here. <laughs> That'll bring up uh, Clint Harless again. Where it was caught was right around where Mullins would normally be if there wasn't a runner at first to kind of play in the position. <laughs> so, again, with the wind blowing the way it is, Stinchcomb had a better beat. Clint Harless, lefty. First pitch to Harless is going to be popped up foul territory. This one's going to get out of play, though. As the count moves to 0-1, still a runner at first for the Eagles. 7-7 seven, seven game with two down, top of the sixth. Also, McAllister's in really good shape to be able to restart a rally again when they come up in the bottom of the sixth. Again, they played it all, well, they brought up to the plate all nine batters for the Buffaloes in the previous half inning. By the way, if you're wondering, uh, Morgan has been subbed out again for Jordan Clark. So Morgan came in to hit for Clark, and then Clark has re-entered back into right field. Counts 0-1 on the lefty Harless, who is 1 for 2. 0-1 pitch. Line drive right back up the middle. It's going to get into the outfield. It's going to be another base knock here for the southpaw. And that puts a runner into scoring position. Back-to-back -back base hits for Clint Harless. Going with his last two at-bats. Brings up Brody Ashby, who's now the pitcher. So I'm interested to see. I didn't see if Reed Calc went, everywhere. It went anywhere. He's the leadoff batter. We had Ashby just come in for him. I don't know if he's now playing anywhere in the field. We'll have to see the next time he comes. They enter the field as the first pitch in there for a strike, a high strike to Brody Ashby. Or if just Calc is now out of the, like, the now the new designated hitter, we'll have to see. 0-1. Curveball doesn't get the call. Misses the outside. Pour the plate. Count now 1-1. One Lowerman entered in the third inning and has been very competitive over the last now three and a third, three and two thirds. One one. Misses upstairs. Count goes to two and one. He's found himself in a lot of uh, <laughs> guys getting on base, a lot of runners in scoring position. He's limited the damage to only two runs so far. The Eagles have a chance to retake the lead, though, if they can get another base hit. They've been able to get a lot of them so far today. I'll tally him up after this 2-1 pitch. They'll pick off over to second instead, and 
you know, not be in time. That's not as much as you think. They've only had eight base hits so far. McAllister. Let me see. One, two, three. With four. They have half of that. Two, one. Check swing. He did go around. Wouldn't matter anyway. It's called strike two. Now two balls, two strikes, two down with the runner at first and second. Trying to leave them stranded there and keep the tie here in the top of the sixth. Lowerman looking for the punch out. Looks at second base. Looks at Ashby and fires. Curveball got him looking. Gave him the bender inside corner. Strike three leaves him stranded. And it's a 7-7 game still as we head to the home half of the sixth. Top of the order up for the Buffaloes. Less now Hodgel Mullins when we return here on K. Beat the heat with American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and Freeze and Flare, your local champs for cool perfection. Proud McAllister Buffalo supporters. Score with financing offers upon approved credit. See dealer for details. Call 918-217-8785 or visit freezeandflare.com to hit it out of the park. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Freeze and Flare, your home comfort, home run. License number 001-44485. Here at Reagan Auto, we offer a variety of services for your vehicle needs. AC and heat repair, brakes, tires, front end repair, alignments, electrical repair, and everything in between. We are proud to offer a select line of engines and transmissions backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide warranty. Give us a call at 918-715-3236 or stop by and speak to one of our advisors about how we can help. 306 East Wyandotte in McAllister from the team at Reagan Auto. Thanks for your business. Hey guys, it's Sam from Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula. With two locations to choose from, we have close to 200 vehicles on the ground and coming in. And with vehicles starting at $29.95, we have something for everyone. And if you need parts or service, we are loading up at both locations to serve you better. Plus, with our mobile service van and our pickup and delivery, we can help you with sales and service no matter where you are. So come see us at Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula and let us make it happen for you. Bob in the sixth inning, 7-7 seven, seven our score. Brody Ashby going to be in for his first full inning of work. He came in with one down, I believe, uh, in the previous inning where McAllister scored six runs to be able to tie it up 7-7. Seven, seven. It's top of the order. Caden Lesnow, Gunnar Hodgel, Gannon Mullins in the 7-7 seven, seven game. We did have some defensive changes as I looked around because I was curious about Calc batting out of the leadoff spot where he was going to be when he came onto the field. He's now playing shortstop. Durant, who was playing shortstop, has now moved over to third for Hawley. So here's the windup in the first pitch to Les now. He'll be in there for a strike. 0-1, the count to Les now to begin the bottom of the sixth in a 7-7 seven, seven tie. Hawley has moved from third base over to right field. And from right field, who is uh, Logan Gandy, this one skips into the catcher, Grogan, for ball one. Gandy has moved from right field to the dugout. According to the lineup card, the Eagles just had 10 players today. So all 10 players for the Eagles have played today, according to the lineup card. 1-1 one, one pitch to Les now. That'll miss high, and now move the count to 2-1. and one. Wind still blowing out strong at the left center field. Right around 35 mile per hour wind gust. Could be up to 40 today. The 2 1 line drive left field. That's going to be a base knock and a leadoff single for Caden Less now. And that ex uh, extends his hit streak to four games in a row. He's now had hits in 10 out of his last 11. And we're going to have an early mound visit or an infield visit. This is strange. So Coach Grogan's going to go speak with his pitcher, Ashby, and that'll be it. Just one base hit given up, and he's he's done for the day. So that will bring in the second baseman, Harless, to the mound. We'll take a break and be back with a new pitcher for the Red Oak Eagles here on. My wife makes the best lasagna, even in that old kitchen of ours. She deserves the best kitchen money can buy, but all our cash was tied up. So we went to the Bank N.A. for a loan for our kitchen remodel, and the folks at the Bank N.A. came through for us and our family. Plus, the Bank N.A. is local, so the money stays in town. Call 918-423-2265 or go into the Bank N.A. to get your loan for whatever your family wants or needs. The Bank N.A. Strong. Secure. 
and ready to loan. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Okay! Tire and Auto says, come meet our new owner, Dylan Hackler. We're a Michelin dealer and we're stocked up with Cooper, Toyo, Hankook, and Max's Buckshot Mutters and Farm and ATV Tires. Tire light on? We can fill your tires with nitrogen. We do brakes, alignments, struts, and oil changes too. You'll appreciate our fast, friendly service. All work's guaranteed and estimates are free. Okay, Tire and Auto, 801 North 1st, McAllister. Call 918-423-2121. Good luck, buffs. Have a great season. Fit and Madness is here. So brush up on your free throws and come shoot for TTNL. You get two shots, sink one, and we pay for half of your TTNL. Sink both, and Fit Nissan pays for all of your TTNL. Hurry up and shoot! Nothing but net. Don't forget to tell them Maddie sent ya. Fit Nissan is your best deal dealer. Learn more at fitnissan.com. So we have a pitching change, as I just mentioned, uh, that number 18... Uh, Rabbit Hawley, he has now uh, been from third to right field. Now he's over to second base as we have some position changes. We'll get to that in a second, but right now we have a call to the bullpen brought to you by Jet Tire Service. They've been serving Pittsburgh County and beyond since 1962. They offer 18 major tire brands. The go-ahead run for the Buffaloes is at first base. Bottom of the sixth inning, nobody out. First pitch to Hodgel. Shows bunt, gets it down, but fouled on the first base line. Four strike one. Clint Harless has pitched in 11 and a third innings this year. Three strikeouts to one walk at 3.09 ERA. 333 batting average against him. So again, Hawley I know has moved from right field over to second base now. Harless has moved from second to the mound. Back in right field is number 13, Logan Gandy. As we have a pickoff over to first that's not in time. So Gandy was, <laughs> Gandy was off the field for all of three outs, and then he's back over into right field. So we'll look at the defensive lineman again for the Eagles just in a second as Les now is trying to get a good jump. As here's a ground ball over to the deep hole area. They're around the shortstop location. They'll throw it to second and overfire the second baseman. Les now is going to go over to third. They might wave him. He takes a big turn. Now he's going home. As the throw goes to second instead of home, and the Buffaloes take the lead. From down 7-1, heading into the bottom of fifth, to an 8-7 lead in the bottom of the sixth. That will go down as an E6 on the shortstop. Coming all the way home to score it was Caden Les now trying to get the force out on a tough play there. And now the Buffaloes are up 8-7 in the bottom of the sixth inning. Gannon Mullins trying to tack him on. Runner in scoring position with nobody out. 8-7 game. McAllister leads by one. First pinch from Harless. Outside corner strike one. If the Buffaloes can pull this off, this would be an, an incredible win. First off, breaks a three-game losing streak to the Red Oak Eagles as that one misses outside for ball one. They still count, uh, they can't count their chickens before they hatch, though, before their eggs hatch. There's still work to be done in the top of the seventh. Still got to get three outs, but right now you want as much, as many insurance runs as you can get. 1-1. One, one. Pops it up in the infield. Might be a tough place. It's high in the air. Battling the wind and making the catch. Backpedaling is a shortstop calc all the way to the left field area. And that's out number one. Brings up Braden Phillips, who is 0 for 3. A fly out to short. A fielder's choice ground ball to third base and a fielder's choice RBI. Ground ball to the shortstop position. Still Hodgel in scoring position, an 8-7 lead. Buffaloes have scored seven in a row against the Red Oak Eagles. Yeah, stepping off will be Harless, looking back over to second. When the Eagles come back up, it'll be the 8-9-1 batter, so McAllister will have to face the top of the order again. First pitch to Phillips. High fly ball, left field, carrying down the line, but this one will tail foul for strike one. About 20, uh, 15 feet to the left of the left field foul line. Hit off the bottom of the wall. Count 0-1 on Phillips. Phillips this year batting 375 with runners and scoring. And 10 RBIs now for the senior. 0-1, runner takes off for third. Not a great jump. The throw over two third is not in time and it didn't end up getting caught by the third baseman Duran anyway. 
Not the best jump by Hodgel, but he still gets third on a steal. Because that was a swing and a miss for strike two. Fly ball into the outfield should score Hodgel. Especially when you consider that the throw coming in from the outfield would have to be against the wind. Infield comes in on the infield turf. Wind up from Harless and the 0-2 pitch. Pops it up. Foul territory. Possibly playable. Durant chasing after it. And now looks like the wind will take that out of anyone's reach over towards the Hughes Fieldhouse. Count remains at 0-2, and Phillips trying to continue to battle. It's an 8-7 McAllister lead, their first lead of the game in the bottom of the sixth. Aiden Shumway's on deck, who is 2-for-2 two two with an RBI double. 0-2 pitch to Phillips. It's going to be low and outside. Grogan. Bodies it up, and the count is one and two. Harless again, the two-strike pitch to Phillips. Chase after a high fastball, getting reacted late. I like that from Phillips. Fouls it off over towards the uh, track once more. Beautiful day to walk the track. Again, he saw that that might be a borderline strike, decided I'm going to swing at it and make contact instead of Putting that pitch into the hands of the umpire. The one-two pitch. It'll be popped up into the outfield. Should be enough to score the run. It'll be in left field. It is shallow left field. Making the catch. Tagging up his Hodgel. The throw from left field. Going to be a close one. No, it's cut off. Yeah. RBI sack five from Braden Phillips. Drives in a run. And the Buffaloes extend their lead to 9-7. to seven, Getting an insurance run. And it brings up Aiden Shumway. Shumway is two for two with an RBI double, trying to restart a rally here in the sixth. So this one's going to be a line drive right side, and he's three for three on the day. Aiden Shumway. I mean, you got to tip your cap. His sixth at bat this year with a first pitch hit, too. Now, there's not many people that are hitting better than Aiden Shumway in 5A baseball. And that brings up Spencer Stinchcomb. Number one, he is on a <laughs> he's on a heater that you never want to get off of right now. I mean, whoever wants to get off of a heater, right? First pitch to Spencer Stinchcomb nearly hits him. Gets out of the way of the ball, and that'll be one ball, no strikes. Stinchcomb is 0 for 2. He's so reached on an E6 and a walk, but he's also flown out to the second baseman. Outfield still playing deep with the wind gusting out to left field. Pick off over to first is not in time. I haven't seen anyone warming up the McAllister bullpen. This could be Jackson Lowerman's game to, to close here. He's now all of a sudden in line for the win. Shumway takes off for second. A ground ball gets into the outfield turf. Rounding second will be Shumway. Here comes the throw in from left field. It'll be cut off by the shortstop. And that's a base knock for Spencer Stinchcomb that puts runners at the corners with two down for Jackson Lowerman. Lowerman has the biggest hit of the day for the Buffaloes. He had a two RBI double down the left field line, but a third run scored with the bases loaded because of an E7. So it is 9-7 McAllister up by two on a just an incredible comeback by the Buffaloes. Harless first pitch to uh, Lowerman fills the zone for strike one. Let me see how many pitches that Lowerman's at right now. Lowerman is at 70, so if unless he has a 50-pitch inning in the seventh, he's good on pitches to finish the game out. The 0-1, it hits him in the head. Ran up high, but it got him in the helmet. He gives a thumbs up to everybody, says, I'm good, I'm good. And that'll load the bases. This bases loaded alert is brought to you by Pops Kettle Corn in Old Town. Choose your flavor of kettle corn or try their freshly made pork rinds at Pops Kettle Corn in Old Town. So Ethan Watkins, who is one for three on the day, his one hit was an RBI double. Now for As McAllister is up by two, but they have a chance to really give themselves a lot of breathing room if they can get a base hit. Just one base hit, it looks like. Should be able to score a couple of runs. McAllister has had plenty of extra base hits, though, today. Nearly half their hits. As this one's going to be swung on and missed on a low pitch for strike one. 
It's a two-run lead for McAllister, who scored eight runs in the last two innings combined. Harless, the 0-1. Line drive left side, another base not for Ethan Watkins. One run's going to score. Here's the throw in from left field. Down the line, cut off. That's two runs scored. The throw gets away from the second baseman on a throw back, and that makes it an 11-7 game on a two-RBI single for Ethan Watkins with the bases juiced. He's heating up as well. That's his second and third RBIs of the day. And McAllister... From 7-1 to one to 11-7, to seven, they have scored 10 unanswered runs on the Red Oak Eagles since they scored two in the top of the fifth. And Watkins looks over at first base. I want you to pan over to Watkins real quick. He looked over and he said, are you not entertained to Coach Meadows? I, for, for, I know exactly what he said. He looked over to Coach Meadows and said, are you not entertained? They did in and out yesterday, and he jumped on top of the – I think it was on top of the, the the tunnel over here, and he looked over, I think either into the stands or onto the field as his first pitch is going to be fouled backwards. I, don't, I think he just went over towards the stands is what he did. I don't know if he jumped on top, obviously, but he goes over while they're doing in and out, and he said the energy was great yesterday. I looked <laughs> over to everybody and I said, are you not entertained? <laughs> so after he has a multi-hit game and is now two for four with three RBI, he looked over at Meadows, Coach Meadows, and said, are you not entertained? Runners at first and second for Jordan Clark. Count is 0-1 after the first pitch was fouled off for a strike. Two down, McAllister up by four. Is this curveball is going to fill the – no, it's going to be a ball. And taking third base is Jackson Lowerman right behind him. Ethan Watkins put runners at second and third. I think that probably should have been called strike, but they're going to say it was too far inside, not high. So, interesting call. Clark so far today is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. <clears throat> Buffalo's up by four. Next pitch, low. And the count's now 2-1. and one. For the second consecutive inning, it has been all nine batters at the plate for McAllister. 2-1. That curveball will clip the knees. And now Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Harless trying to keep the deficit at four runs. 2-2 two -two to Clark. Fastball caught the lower outside corner for strike three. And Clark is down on strikes, but the Buffaloes score four runs to take an 11-7 lead. They'll try to sign, seal, and deliver the win when we head to the top of the seventh. Again, 11-7, McAllister on top here on KNED. Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub serves great breakfasts all day and juicy burgers too. Angel's Diner also serves brick oven pizza on Friday and Saturday nights from 5 p.m. to close. Angel's Steaks are certified Angus beef and the pub offers beer, wine, and mixed drinks. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner make it Angel's Diner Steakhouse and Pub. 1402 South George 9 Expressway, McAllister. Call 918-423-2633. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Like us Hi, Facebook. my name is Gail, and I invite you to TNW Tire, an Oklahoma-based company formed in 1987. In 2020, TNW Tire acquired the McAllister location, where Doug and I have worked for over 20 years, providing service to McAllister and the surrounding areas. Our trained technicians continue to provide quality service for brakes, suspension, and alignments, along with 24-hour road service. We carry Goodyear, Michelin, and many other brands to fit your budget. Stop by TNW Tire, Highway 69 and Peaceable Road, McAllister. Call 918-426-6571. Go Buffs! Welcome back to Mike Deke Field here in McAllister, Oklahoma. It was a, it's been a tale of two half games so far. McAllister's hoping to keep that trend. They were scoreless in the first three innings with only one hit, and they've scored all 11 of their runs in the fourth, fifth, and sixth innings. A one spot in the fourth, six spot in the fifth, and a four spot in the sixth to take an 11 to seven lead over the Red Oak Eagles. They had three outs to try to close the deal. First pitch in there for a strike from Jackson Lowerman with his 71st pitch to Grayson Colbert. Called strike one. Colbert is one for one. He's walked, singled, and walked a second time. The 0-1 from Lowerman. Catches the outside corner, and the count moves to 0-2. Lowerman came in in the third inning, and it's allowed two runs in the fifth. That's all the blemish that he's had so far. The 0-2 this is outside for ball one. But again, this is why closers make the most money of all the relief pitchers in Major League Baseball. It's the hardest inning to uh, pitch in. It's the final inning where you need to get the win. 
One, two. Curveball does not go where Lowerman wants it to. It's upstairs, and the count is now two and two. It's the 8-9-1 batter, so the Buffaloes do have to face the top of the order again. On deck is Cade Branscombe, who's one for three. 2-2. Two -two. Foul back into the glove of Braden Phillips for strike three. Sit him down, throw it around, one down here in the top of the seventh inning and an 11-7 lead for the Buffaloes. Another strikeout for Mr. Jackson Lowerman. That's his fourth of the day. And he's had three the last time through the lineup for the Eagles. One down, nobody on for Cade Branscombe. First pitch, a little bit below the knees for ball one. Again, at the pace that Lowerman is going, pitch count should not be an issue for him to finish the game. It's if the Eagles put some pressure on the buffs. 1-0. Can't get the outside corner. Phillips wanted it, but does not get it. Count is now 2-0 on Branscombe. Again, the Eagles can score at the drop of a hat. They're so good through the lineup. I mean, you have multiple people that have made their presence known in this game. Reed Kalk, who's on deck. Rabbit Hawley is a danger. Cy Montgomery is as well. 2-0. That one is right down Broadway for strike one. Two balls, one strike. You just want to make sure that with these guys, and I'm not saying that K. Branson can't do any damage. He's already done damage. He has an RBI single in this game. It was the last run scored by the Eagles back in the fifth inning. But the guys that, like Reed Couth that we're talking about, you want to make sure that there's nobody on base for those guys. The 2-1 will be a chopper, third base side. Actually, it's going to be filled by the shortstop, Les Snow on a hop. Quick throws over to first in time for out number two. On a big hop, quick transfer from the shortstop, Les Snow, and the Eagles are down to their final out. Top of the order, Reed Kalk for the Red Oak Eagles. One for two, he singled, walked twice, and struck out swinging his last time up. This is Lowerman's fifth inning of work, looking to get the win. First pitch to Kalk. Right down the middle, strike one. Senior still pumping in strikes here for the Buffs. He has been excellent for the black and gold today both on offense and defense. Yo, one. Curveball misses upstairs. One ball, one strike. Wind still blowing out strong to left field. No fly ball is a gimme. One, one's the count. And the pitch. High fly ball, deep center field. On the run is Watkins and it's over his head. Bounces high off of the wall. And this will extend to another batter as it's going to be a stand-up double for Reed Kalk on a one-hop to the fence. So nobody hurt, though, for the Buffalo defense. McAllister up by four. As the, that just puts an eagle base runner at second base. That was an excellent knock by Reed Kalk, though. Brings up Ty Grogan. This is the fifth time through the lineup for the Eagles. 11-7, McAllister up by four. Grogan is 0 for 3 today as the first pitch in there for a strike. He has struck out swinging. He has reached on a fielder's choice. He's grounded out to third and flown out to center field. Runner at second, two down, 0-1 pitch. Ground ball, shortstop position. This could be it. Lust now fields it. Throws over to first. In time for out number three. And the Buffaloes from down 7-1 going to the bottom of the fifth inning complete the comeback. Score 10 runs in a row to take down the Red Oak Eagles, 11 to seven. Ladies and gentlemen, Buffalo fans far and wide, grab that brush and paint that wind column. Black and gold, an incredibly gritty, come from behind victory for the Buffaloes, gives them their third win in a row, looking for four tomorrow against Broken Bow. We'll take a break, we'll tally up all the stats and come back with your post game stats and you will not want to miss that. You're listening to McAllister Baseball here on Beat the heat with American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and Freeze and Flare, your local champs for cool perfection. Proud McAllister Buffalo supporters. Score with financing offers upon approved credit. See dealer for details. Call 918-217-8785 or visit freezeandflare.com to hit it out of the park. 
Licensed, bonded, and insured. Freeze and Flare. Your home comfort, home run. License number 001 44485. Here at Reagan Auto, we offer a variety of services for your vehicle needs. AC and heat repair, brakes, tires, front end repair, alignments, electrical repair, and everything in between. We are proud to offer a select line of engines and transmissions backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide warranty. Give us a call at 918-715-3236 or stop by and speak to one of our advisors about how we can help. 306 East Wyandotte in McAllister. From the team at Reagan Auto, thanks for your business. Hey guys, it's Sam from Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula. With two locations to choose from, we have close to 200 vehicles on the ground and coming in. And with vehicles starting at $29.95, we have something for everyone. And if you need parts or service, we are loading up at both locations to serve you better. Plus, with our mobile service van and our pickup and delivery, we can help you with sales and service no matter where you are. So come see us at Sam Walters Freedom Ford in McAllister and Eufaula and let us make it happen for you. My wife makes the best lasagna, even in that old kitchen of ours. She deserves the best kitchen money can buy, but all our cash was tied up. So we went to the Bank N.A. for a loan for our kitchen remodel, and the folks at the Bank N.A. came through for us and our family. Plus, the Bank N.A. is local, so the money stays in town. Call 918-423-2265 or go into the Bank N.A. to get your loan for whatever your family wants or needs. The Bank N.A. Strong, secure, and ready to loan. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Okay. Okay. Tire and Auto says come meet our new owner Dylan Hackler. We're a Michelin dealer and we're stocked up with Cooper, Toyo, Hankook and Max's Buckshot Mutters and Farm and ATV tires. Tire light on? We can fill your tires with nitrogen. We do brakes, alignments, struts and oil changes too. You'll appreciate our fast friendly service. All work's guaranteed and estimates are free. Okay, Tire and Auto, 801 North 1st McAllister. Call 918-423-2121. Good luck Buffs. Have a great season. Fit and Madness is here, so brush up on your free throws and come shoot for TTNL. You get two shots, sink one, and we pay for half of your TTNL. Sink both, and Fit Nissan pays for all of your TTNL. Hurry up and shoot! Nothing but net. Don't forget to tell them Maddie sent ya. Fit and Nissan is your best deal dealer. Learn more at fitnissan.com. The Buffaloes have had some really cool wins this year, but this one might be one of the top ones, and it was a non-district game. McAllister was down 7-1 to in this game. If you've been listening to this one at all, then you understand where I'm going with it. They were down 7-1 to going to the bottom of the fifth inning, and then they scored 10 runs in the fifth and sixth to take the win 11-7 to as McAllister breaks a three-game losing streak to the Red Oak Eagles and improves to a three-game winning streak on the season to improve to 10-4. and uh, so a fantastic win for the Buffaloes. We're going to have a little bit more analysis on this after our postgame stats. Brought to you by Big V Feed Center and McAllister, Hatco Farm and Ranch in Kiowa and Shakota Wholesale Feed Company. Go see all of them. Uh, that one's in Shakota, obviously, for your spring feeding program needs. Let's start off with the uh, Red Oak Eagles. They dropped to 11-5 and five on the year. Again, a top 20 team in Class A, where three out of their uh, now five losses were against top 10 teams in uh, Class 2A. Uh, leading it off, Reed Kalk went two for three, including a double off the uh, one hop to the wall in his final at bat. Ty Grogan went 0 for five. Denver Durant 0 for three with a walk. Rabbit Holly went one for two with an RBI. He was also hit by a pitch and walked. Cy Montgomery went two for three with two RBIs, including a two RBI, or rather an RBI double and then an RBI single in his next at bat. Clint Harless went two for three. Brody Ashby went 0 for three. Uh, Grayson Colbert went one for two with two walks, and Cade Branscombe went one for four with an RBI. I believe the loss does go to uh, Brody Ashby today since the base hit that was given up was the eventual go-ahead run, so he does get the loss today despite uh, only getting two outs. He came in uh, in a one-run game uh, in the bottom of the fifth, ended up getting the outs after a pass ball led to a run scored, but the base hit, which would eventually go around to score, uh, was given up by him, so he does get the loss today. There were nine hits today by the Red Oak Eagles. There were six strikeouts, seven free passes given up, but four errors, and those errors are what helped McAllister win this game. McAllister played a cleaner game today, and they uh, pitched about equally, I mean almost exactly equally, as well as the Red Oak Eagles today. As we're looking at, uh, what is it? Uh, looks like Cal went four and a third. Four hits, seven earned runs, seven walks, four strikeouts. Ashby went two, uh, two-thirds of an inning, had one earned run and a strikeout, and Harless went a full inning, 
three earned runs and a strikeout to him. For the, Bu the Buffaloes, Caden Lust now went one for three with a walk and a single in his final at bat, extending his hit streak to four in a row and now has hits in 10 out of his last 11. Gunnar Hodgel went over two with two walks. Gannon Mullins 0 for three. Braden Phillips 0 for three with two RBI. Uh, one of them was the go-ahead RBI um, to be able to get the Buffaloes the lead in the bottom of the sixth inning on a sack fly to left field. He also had that RBI fielder's choice. Aiden Shumway went three for three with an RBI. Once again, it's fifth multi-hit game of the season. Uh, he's got to be close to 500 batting average now, if, if not already there. A perfect day for Aiden Shumway in every sense of the word. Spencer Stinchcomb went one for three today. Jackson Lauerman went one for three with two RBIs, and including probably the biggest hit of the day for the Buffs. Uh, they had the bases loaded. There was only one down, and he drove a ball over to left field, landed in uh, fair territory, a two RBI double, the third run scored on an E7 but it put McAllister from at one point, like I said, just felt like a long shot to get back into the game. Down by six going into the final th uh, nine outs that they had available. And with one swing of the bat, brought it to a one-run game. So, Lyerman, if you're going to you know, pick a player of the game for me, there's there's no one close to Jackson Lyerman today. Action Jackson gets my player of the game nod. Ethan Watkins, two for four with three RBIs. He had a great day at the plate, and he hit the ball hard today too. Uh, Jordan Clark went 0 for 3 with three strikeouts, and Jackson Morgan pinch hit for Clark at one point. He struck out as well. So, uh, McAllister tallied up eight hits, six strikeouts from Max Harmon and Jackson Lowerman. Uh, looks like as we break them both down, Lowerman had four strikeouts, Harmon had two. Lowerman does get the win. Five innings of relief pitching through 84 pitches there, including 50 strikes. So, if, uh, that was 50 out of his 84 pitches for strikes. Only gave up five hits. One earned run, as the other one was unearned, and two walks to uh, uh, Lowerman today. So it was a fantastic ball game for Jackson Lowerman. Um, like I said, player of the game because of what he did on the mound and also what he did at the plate. There were eight free passes given up by the Buffaloes. There were four walks from Harmon, uh, two walks from Lowerman, and then a hit by pitch on top of that. And only one Buffalo error, and that came in the second inning uh, for the Buffs that led to two more runs being scored by the Eagles. So McAllister playing a, a clean game today despite the one error. Uh, and like I said, this is my analysis part of the, the game, and it all it all comes down to this. This is a game that McAllister I don't think wins last year. If you played this same game where they go down 7-1, to one, and there's been times that they played games like that where they went down 7-1 to one a year ago, they don't win this game last year. This is where you're starting to see some of the guys that didn't get a lot of uh, time because of how good and how senior heavy the class was in 2022. The team was in 2022. A lot of people that had to get varsity experience last year, they were, you know, getting used to playing varsity baseball. And it, it's a it's a transition. It takes some time. And then when now you have all those guys that played plus a full off season and a lot of your starters back. I mean, you have seven out of your nine starters back from a year ago. That's a really, really good win. Um, against a good team. Again, a top 20 team in Class A, a team that before last year went to 15 straight state tournaments. I don't care what class you do it at. That's very hard to do. A uh, tradition, history-rich Red Oak Eagles that year in and year out, even if they don't make it to the state tournament like they did last year, like they didn't last year, they're still a good team, and they're on target to be a better team than they were a year ago. So uh, great win by the Buffaloes. Again, a game that I don't think they win a year ago just because they didn't have the experience – to be able to win a game like that and to be down by six in your final nine outs guaranteed uh, and even not guaranteed. I mean, if this was decided to be an eight run after five innings, you know, Red Oak, if you don't score that inning, Red Oak scores two more in the six and you don't score in the bottom of the six, that's game over. So you're on the, you're on the ropes of being run ruled and then you go and you win <laughs> like that. It's a very impressive win. It was an awesome win today for the Buffaloes and it improves them to 10 and four on the year. And, uh, Riding high into Broken Bow tomorrow and then a Dell City doubleheader on Monday. So, excellent win for the Buffaloes. Proud of them and uh, good to see them escape with a win in this one. Really fight for this win uh, after struggling at the plate. Really just uh, did the most with what they were given in this one. And I can't say enough about the, the W. All right, we'd like to thank our sponsors once again. If you can't buy anything from these guys, at least go buy them and say thank you or call them up and say thank you for sponsoring McAllister Baseball. You truly don't understand the kind of uh, impact that would make on these uh, sponsors to say, hey, man, thank you for uh, sponsoring McAllister Baseball. 
And uh, we uh, – because we can't do it without him. He literally can't go to all these games, couldn't go to Arizona without him, can't do all this stuff without him. So make sure that you tell him thank you if you get the chance to, or you can say your thanks by buying from them if you ever find yourself in need of their services. Sam Wampler's Freedom Ford, The Bank and Aim, OK Tire and Auto, Fenton Nissan, Angels Diner, T&W Tire, Freeze and Flare Heat and Air, and Reagan Auto. Also, big thank you to our board operator, Mr. White, the Cadillac Kid, as well as Mr. Austin Weed on the camera this afternoon slash evening. That's right, senior camera. And you really went quiet for the last three <laughs> innings. <laughs> well, there was a lot going on, there was honestly. A lot there was on. a lot going on. I didn't really want to say much because I didn't want to interrupt. and Because uh, you were in a flow. It was a good game. Yeah, so, great game. You, know, you were kind of getting in that flow, so that was good. <laughs> thank you. Senior camera operator, whatever you want to be Opera, called. Yeah. Take a senior camera tech. And thank you, the listener, for spending your Friday night with us as well. One final time for Mike Deakfield in McAllister, Oklahoma. It was the McAllister Buffaloes 11 and the Red Oak Eagles 7 and come from behind fashion. Until tomorrow when McAllister tries to win their fourth in a row, this time against the Broken Bow Savages at noon on a Saturday. This is Brandon Green saying Buffaloes win. And don't just have